podcast is intended for mature audiences. The views and opinions expressed are those of the panelists and do not reflect in any way those of the podcast partners, sponsors, or affiliates. Enjoy. Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. Every day I'm hustling, 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 hustling. Every day I'm hustling, 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 every day I'm Hey daddy, this a dollar beat. Boxingvoice.com. No matter what nobody say, man. Spirit, can't nobody fuck with me, man. You know, I can't be fucked with, you know. Dollar D. Beyonce Productions. Whether you pay to see me win, or you pay to see me lose, you're gonna pay. Fuck, if the kids still gotta eat. I don't have to watch, mm-hmm. you know, any footage of a, a fighter. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I'm Floyd Mayweather, everybody gotta watch me. I knew eventually I was gonna have to fight Oscar. Over. I feel like, um, I feel like even straight up and down, no really no special effects. Boxingboys.com. How can Canelo have the biggest deal? Your, your deal is for 300 million, and I made, I made 350 million just in one fight. And you're fighting on the app. Boxingboys.com. I'm a king, okay? Mm-hmm. I eat a feast. When, every time I eat, I eat a feast. And when I get up from the table, I don't give a fuck who get the leftovers. At the end of the day, follow my green friend. Dollar D. Beyonce Productions. Boxingwoods.com What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of the Boxing Voice Radio. Today is Wednesday morning, and we're back with another one to get you through your work day. If you didn't catch our episode last night, where we discussed the undercard that was officially announced for Canelo Alvarez, go ahead and check that out. You can find it on iTunes. Tune in. And obviously, uh, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all that good stuff. We're right here on YouTube.com forward slash The Boxing Voice. Today, we're going to keep talking about Haney Garcia. We're 10 days out from the big pay-per-view fight. And we're asking the question, is Garcia going too far with the Diddy Tickled Devons I'd rather not say. Strange way to promote. And that's what I'm asking you. Is this promotion or is he going too far? Yesterday was Ryan Garcia's media workout. And uh, obviously he had a lot to say outside of claiming he has video. He also claimed he will be knocking out Devin Haney. So... This is what we're talking about as well as previewing and predicting uh, the Pro Box card. So if you want to call in to talk about Angelo Leo and Edward Baez, we're going to be fighting on Pro Box today. Feel free. If you want to call in, voice your opinion on Haney Garcia, Garcia Haney, feel free. The links to do so are now pinned in the live chat right here at youtube.com forward slash the boxing voice. So I will get you the audio where, you know, this is all stemming from. It is coming from experts, experts from Ryan Garcia's uh, media workout. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and give you that right now. And uh, this is it. And as a you know young boy, boxing since I was seven years old, and for people just to disrespect me blatantly and say that you know I don't work hard, it's a it's a slap in the face to all the you know my work my family did to get me to the position I'm in, all the work I did, you know to me it's very disrespectful. 
if it's even raining now. That's how sad it is. <laughs> When uh, we had the eclipse yesterday, and I got the rain the day, yeah, right? Yeah, so exactly. Uh, would the, are you keeping track of anything that Devin is saying or his workout last week? Once you go to a swimming pool party with Diddy, it's like you don't even pay attention to what the fuck he's saying. But at the end of the day, once once your booty hole got tickled, it's over. You can't even say nothing after that. I, I'll be real with you. Once you've been, they got the tapes. It's over for him. It's fucked. Right, when the fight next Saturday, yeah. what are we going to see from Ryan Garcia? Shout out to Beto Duran. Kept it super professional. Barely even smirked there, you know, um, because that came out of left field for him, I'm sure. None of that shit, but you're going to see an ass whooping. You know, I'm going to whoop his ass. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to cook him. It's going to be light work for me. Ryan's hilarious. He said, what are we going to see? He said, none of that shit. <laughs> none of the shit that he claims is on tape. This motherfucker is wild, and for real. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he's making it worse on himself, but he's actually coming for Devin's juggler. I seen another video. I wish I would have kept that one. If you can tag me in it, if you, uh, you know, are familiar with it, go ahead and do so, so we can share it with the rest of the community. But there's one where he's like, "Why, why would I be afraid of Devin? I fought Tank. What's Devin gonna do? Jab me to death, bruh? He's out here wilding." Uh, he could sell a fight, but I don't know that, you know, uh, claiming that you were, you know, abused as a child and then making fun of someone being abused allegedly sounds crazy to me. Uh, but, yeah, that's why I'm asking, like, is this promotion? Because let me tell you, um, that Diddy topic is a very popular topic and and i don't know if he believes by attaching his fight to that it will draw in attention i'm not sure again this is what we're discussing right uh but feel free once again to call in links are now pinned here on youtube and uh you can call us via twitter spaces and discord as well um yeah, man, quite uh, quite interested to hear your guys' opinion on this and whether or not you believe this is promoting or has he, you know, gone a bit too far with these strange allegations. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, get in. Oh, fuck. I'm always screen sharing when I don't need to. All right, um, well, we did that. You guys seen a bunch of shit there. Fucking hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's bad. I always, I hate when I fucking screen share. Anyways, uh, what's going on, ladies and gents? This is what we're talking about. If you're interested, I know. Thanks, Rue. I, I wish I would have seen your comment minutes ago, right? You know, if you're interested, feel free to call in. This is what we're talking about. Ten days out for the big pay-per-view fight. Price is now $70 on the zone. And uh, I haven't officially checked if, uh, you know, let me double check now as a zone member. Has it also dropped another 10 or not? Um, and I will keep you updated. Just opened up my DAZN, and I don't see any advertisement for it. Usually, they have the big old buy now some, somewhere there. But uh, we're going out to Nike Hendrix. What's up? All right, here we go. So the pay-per-view, $69.99, even as a DAZN app subscriber so uh looks like the ten dollars was universal uh nike hendrix you there let me make sure it's not me and you suleiman you there well you haven't finished connecting yet but can you unmute suleiman suleiman yeah, I'm unmuted. I'm unmuted. You can hear me? We hear you, brother. What's up with you? 
Yeah, man. How you doing? How you doing? So, yeah. So, the, it, you think if Ryan Garcia does what he was supposed to do from day one, become the, the Oscar de la Oja clone and shows maturity and boxes and works, stop pumping the jab, like do everything starting off the jab like a Oscar de la Oja and show maturity in this fight, you, th you think he could, he could um, you know, pull it through? Like the latter movement of De La Hoya, the I mean, jab, the yeah, punch fight. Absolutely. If he's going to become De La Hoya in this fight, for sure, De La Hoya gave Mayweather tons of trouble. But De La Hoya had a piston-like jab. You know, he really used that jab. Um, I don't know that Ryan is the biggest jabber. Because I would let you see that, man. That, that, that's what he was supposed to be from day one. He was supposed to be his clone, but I don't know what happened. It drifted, you know what I'm saying? If if he does that, he shows maturity. Uh, maybe he could do some surprise, or maybe he could just lose. But if he lose like a like split decision or something, that that could generate more revenue for him and uh, and give him his props. Maybe he could fight another champion or something. But you know, I I just want to see the show him to show more improvement because in the last fight, in the Duarte fight, he showed some improvement, man. You know what I'm saying? For sure. We got we got to give him positive energy, man. Positive nah, energy, I man. do. I I, you know, I'm with you. I think he showed improvement. I wish, you know, he would have brought in uh, one more trainer to help Derek James so that, you know, uh, he could have improved on that shoulder roll. You know, you, you guys, I'm a fan of his shoulder roll. Thanks a lot for having me on. I know you're busy. You got the show packed. Uh, good, 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 good show, bro. I'm listening. All right, all right, all right. Looks like we got Ring Walk Danny. What's going on, champ? Top of the morning, champ. How you doing? All good, man. All good. Just here with the community, you know, asking, asking the question, man. Is Ryan Garcia going too far with the whole Diddy Tickle Devins? You already know. Uh, strange way to promote for me, man. Uh, and he keeps, you know. Come on, bro. You know, I mean, you think that's promotion? Like I said, strange way to promote for me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, you know, these are wild allegations. Uh, we just seen Meek Mills come out and express that those allegations is even, you know, causing his son issues in school. So, you know, I'm just saying, uh, is he going too far? We asking the question, and 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 no, obviously, I don't think he, I don't think, I don't think he going too far, you know, because he he really just talking. You get what I'm saying? Like, I mean, a guy, the guy that really motivated you. I mean, Jay Z, right? He one of your guys. He one of the the ones that put a battery in your back. I mean, he be at, at, at or you know, he'd be at, at Diddy parties, you know. I feel like that was the thing for a while is is Diddy parties, you know the 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 beautiful women gonna be there, the who's who gonna be there, and then you know, <clears throat> you know allegedly, you know things took place at some of these parties. But I feel like I feel like if you was in Hollywood for a while, everybody went to a Diddy party. I actually just sent you this uh look like a music video to me, very well put together. Whoever did this. But it's like uh, pretty much a recap of Diddy's uh, of Diddy's fiftieth birthday, and I mean, you know, I think they said there's like a hundred and seventy combined Grammys in the building, and like all this other shit. So I mean, everybody be at Diddy parties, but I feel like it's just him trying to find a way to, uh, like you say, got a like the situation has a lot of negative attention right now, and I feel like he's just trying to attach. You know, to any any which way he can. So you do consider it promotion from his standpoint, not that you agree with the way he's promoting. Yeah, but... yeah, like you say, you know, it's just a weird way. Yeah, you know, up. like I mean, I don't even find it like me personally. I I I find it not as much weird as I just find it like uh, hypocritical on him. You feel me? Especially like with that. the things, especially with the things he has said in the uh lead up to this fight. Exactly. You know, I was one of the people that I was like, I feel like there's a there's truth in what he's saying. I just felt like he was going the wrong way about it. 
now I feel like it almost kind of, I don't know, raises his eyebrows, makes people like, you yep. know what I mean? Because you clearly yep. trolling on trolling with one shit, but things that are, you know, as severe or, you know, as negative, you know, and things like that, he making a joke out of. So I feel like... uh yeah, again, a bit hypocritical, but I just kind of feel bad because it's like I genuinely felt there was some truth to a lot of the things he was saying. And I think because of like some of the promoting methods, it may it may it may it may question the people that was like actually backing him. Like, damn, was he you know what I mean, was he trolling? Was he being for real? So Yeah, was man, he just um... promoting? Was he just promoting, you know, so... Again, strange way of promoting, for sure, you know. Um, yeah, <laughs> strange way of promoting, man. Uh, but looks like we got our first Super Chat of the day. Coyote Blanco, $5. Shout out to you, Ness, and the whole TBB community. Just starting my shift. Let's get this bread. Two flexing emojis. Salute to you. James Benitez in Atlanta, $2. He says, so is the PBC 20,000 pay-per-view buys real? I don't know. That is what uh, Rick Glazier is reporting, man. That is what Rick Glazier is reporting. As of right now, there's no other uh, numbered sources yet. But uh, Danny, uh, Punch from New York. You know, uh, we've had him here on the show many times. He seems right, to believe right. that we're going to get an influx of, uh, you know, fans. Like, I guess it's called the walk-ups, you know? Like, that by fight night, he believes it will be sold out. Also... Yeah, that's I for whoever. Well, I'm just saying that term is used for, like, any event that has tickets. Yeah, walk-ups. You know, walk-ups is, you know, your your your... Purchases at the door, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Now, also, let's be clear. Let's be clear. Uh, it's funny. It's funny, right? Because uh, I've only been to one fight at Barclays, and it was the Tank and Rolly fight. And I had a, uh, I had a, you know, lady friend come in, come in to New York for the fight, and uh, bro, I bought a, I bought her a ticket to the fight. In the Uber on our way to the fight. Mm. Like, I totally... Ness, it was one of those things. We having such a great time, I totally forgot. Like, oh, wait, she need a ticket to get in. Because, you know, I got a credential. I'm like, oh, shit, she needs a ticket to get in. So I'm sure there's going to be, you know, people morning of, you know, day of, day before. Um, Especially once we see the fight week. Things kicking off. I mean, uh, there was just, I don't know, a piece of content we put out, whether it be a live, a video, a short, whatever the case may be. And uh, I was reading the comments. You know, people are still unsure whether or not he's going to show up next Saturday night or it's a fight week at all. So I think uh, once people get a bit more security, especially the People in that tri-state area, that New York City area, I think that, uh, you know, and I've said it, I think that you'll get your walk-ups. You know, I think you'll get, you know, your people in the building. So I wanted to so, screen share this so because rival promoters definitely taking shots at Oscar and not Eddie. Uh, Brittany Goosen says, throwback Tuesday to that time. Tank and Rowley sold out and broke records as the highest grossing boxing event at the Barclay Center. A great promotion from all involved from start to finish. Sheesh. You'd have to be a real dumbass not to take notes. Wink and emoji. Hashtag the one. Then Ellerby of Mayweather Promotions jumps on quote tweets and says, clearly what? Whomever scaled their fight didn't know what the fuck they were doing. And it will ultimately cost the fighters a bunch of money. While they're making jokes, they should be focused on all those 
fucking tickets that's still in the box office. Can't blame Hearn on this one. So the uh, attacks on the failed tickets continue. And now from rival promoters that obviously use that venue. uh, For someone that Devin obviously wants to fight. Um, And it's just pretty corny that that is the way of not making a fight is is by saying, look, he's not a commercial draw. Meanwhile, everyone else isn't a commercial draw. Um, But yeah, man. Ten days out. This is all part of the business. Does that help, right? All news is good news. Negative publicity is still good publicity. How you look at the rival promoters talking about the situation? Obviously, subliminally. Well, very directly, but, you know. <clears throat> I mean, it's been happening the whole kind of, like, build-up to this fight. Uh I mean, I feel like it's been covered more than others, but that's what come with the business game. Like, you know, they, they're they going to talk this shit. I feel like usually guys at the top, you know, are being hated on. They're finding ways to diminish. I mean, it happens with Tank almost every day. People find ways to, you know what I mean? So, uh... Am I surprised? Absolutely not. I mean, you're talking about Oscar De La Hoya, who has took shots at everybody and their mother. Just a few days ago, remember, he said, you know, we're killing it. And all you fucking promoters. I mean, he yeah. just took shots at, uh, just literally just took shots at Roley, obviously after his loss. Yeah. He did, he did, he did. So, you know, they beef him, man. This is part of it. But like, Fuck, man. Yeah, you shouldn't throw stones if you live in a glass house, man. When you got these type of fights, you got you gotta you gotta do your job. Um, what do you think could have been done from Oscar's standpoint? Like, should he have done his own media role as the promoter and and talked about the fights on several different radios and, and podcasts? Should he have gone to New York at, with the fighters and, and maybe done some of those I media mean, roles did, as the bro. legend? Like, let's not forget, the man did. Literally joined Devin Ryan on their media day. He did the Ariel Hawani show. He did, that is true. Uh, he did Sports Center or, or First Take. Like, uh, you know, like, my man's promoted. You know, uh, can he do more? I mean, everybody could do more. Do I expect them to do more? Yeah. Um, I think they will. Uh, I believe Oscar's getting to New York a few days before fight week. So, uh, again, hopefully some promoting can be done there. Some shows can be done uh, on his behalf. But he definitely did his part. I mean, I mean the, the, the answer I want to give you, I don't think – is a realistic answer. I want to say Oscar could have, you know what I mean? You put, you put Ryan in, in, in a, in a training camp, you know, and you don't let him come out till fight week or some shit. Like, nah, I don't really think, again, he can always do more media, but I don't think there was too much that he could have necessarily done. Uh, at least that was in his control. I don't think there was too much that was in his control that he could have done. Nah, for sure. We got uh, another super chat. First one from uh, Que Lo Que Mota. I'm just here for the fight. Ryan's 83% KO. Haney's 48% KO. If Ryan don't get the KO, Haney is winning by rounds. Ness and Danny are the official voices of boxing. Salute, man. Salute. Appreciate you. Your lips to God's ears. We still want them, 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 uh, you know. Numbers. Numbers, man. Daniel Vega. Yeah, we... Go ahead. 
No, I was just say real quick, we only need forty four thousand more for a quarter milli. Really forty three thousand and change. So go smash that subscribe. We need those numbers. Yeah, while Danny numbers while Danny power. dreams really, really big, I'm good with getting that next. We need about six hundred to get to the next goal of two thousand two hundred and seven thousand. Yeah, and that's like this you know, Ness Small is more goals. of a short term goal guy. I'm more of a long term goal guy. Yeah, you know, you know, I want to get those things. Hey, but, hey, but together, them. together, Ness and I, we cover all goals. Um, looks like we got lost my page. Uh, Daniel Vega says, "What are your guys' picks for tonight's pro box?" Definitely, Angelo Lee. Okay. You going? I don't think so to this one, bro. I was looking at it, and I'm like, yo, who is going to be there? No, bro, it's crazy like because- Like, outside, because uh, all these I guys- I was at the fight Saturday. Yeah. Like, three different media dudes, like, oh, yeah, I'm flying out to Florida for Pro Box. I'm like, oh, damn, y'all going to see Ness there. Oh, shit. Um, I wonder who is it that they looking at. I know Jacob's- Bro, from- Angelo Leo, bro. I know two of them flying for Angelo, for sure. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he is doing his thing. He 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 back like every month, my man. You gotta realize too. I mean, shit. A lot of these guys been rocking with him for eight fucking years, nine years type shit. Yeah, this is a good fight for him, man. Edward Baez is a good fighter. He fought Navarrete, you know. Um, Pro Box, you know, they doing their thing, man. They keeping Leo definitely active, and and this is definitely a good fight. It's going to be interesting because I'm pretty sure Angelo Leo won his last fight via body shot. So, uh, you know, Navarrete caught this dude right in the midsection, solar plex area, and stopped him. Um, So it'd be interesting to see if Leo can do the same. Uh, You know, he's got that WBA, Continentals. So we'll see, man. Uh, You know, Baez, you know, lost to Arnold. Well, what is that? No, I just wanted to add some context because you brought up Leo's last fight. He stopped Mike Plania in the third. Mike Plania had only been stopped by one other person. Can you guess who that is? Greer. Greer. Oh, no, Greer oh, lost no. to him, right? Yeah. Uh, no, be- no, no, I said I said stopped by. Who did he, who did he get stopped by? I don't know. Can't think. Eliza Pierce. Okay. Okay. Short dog, right? Ain't that his name? That's the dude that's on overtime a lot now. I mean, he just got knocked out the ring. Didn't he get knocked out the ring? He came back and won, but I think I think he got knocked out the ring. Um Was it uh on OTX? Yeah. I mean it says he got dropped in the second. Yeah, I mean he got yeah, he yeah. definitely went through them ropes. Play this guy buys Yo, gave a tough ass fight guy, to Reese guy, the, too. Was this the guy that was talking about tank or sparring tank or something yeah, like that? Yeah, that's Elijah that somebody- Pierce, yeah. They using the hell out of that to promote him on overtime. Um Bro, he fight at twenty two. I thought he fought like thirty five. Nah, because that's old spawn. Tank was seventeen, bro. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They they you know, they they yeah, they clout. Clout getting. Jason? Nah, getting. Clout getting. They getting their clout up. We got Reese Aleem also for Baez in a tough fight. Uh, he got that win, but shit was tough, man. He, if Baez would have had some power, boy, he was hitting Reese Aleem with some shit. You know? Um, he went 10 with Arnold Common guy who just signed to top rank like last week. So uh, definitely a durable fighter. Definitely a durable fighter, man. Uh, it's going to be an interesting little pro box event. And we'll see, can uh, Angelo Leo keep getting that win? I'm, I'm definitely interested in, in, in watching Jacob. But, you know, he's not in, in with anybody I know. I mean, Jose Orleano, you know, uh, while, while, while it looks like a decent record, I don't really know him. So, we'll see. I'm sure, again, these dudes match make tough, so... I'm sure it's not going to be, you know, a walkover. Dominic Valles. James. Go ahead. No, I was going to read this super chat real quick. 
James Benitez, $10, says, what should have been done is have the fight in L.A. or Vegas or Oakland. Second, not be on pay-per-view. This fight going to have bad attendance and bad viewership. Mm. I hope not, man. I hope not. Um, we'll see. They got, they got, uh, we'll see, man. 10 days, bro. 10 days. You got fight week. It's, it's, it's the media capital, right? That's what they keep saying. So, you know, do you know when they get, when are they getting into town? Are they doing grand arrivals? Is that on the, on the, on itinerary or is it just, uh, you know, like media day? Yeah, but, uh. Is Devin even going to do a media day since he just did one? Is he going to turn around and do a Wednesday one? So yeah, I heard I heard that they are having they are having open workouts in New York. Okay. Um, and Devin's going. I don't know. Shout out to him. I mean, it's fight week. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, he could still choose not to attend because he's like, oh yeah, I made me do two, and I just did one in L.A. like a week ago, right? Wasn't that a few days ago? I mean, that's usually how it happens. That's I mean, Ryan just two. did one yesterday too, though. So you know. No, I'm saying def definitely not too, but typically, I mean, at this level, you'll have a media workout closed off to the public during camp, as they did, and then you'll have, you know, a fight week media workout, whether for the undercard or for the main You think main this one is too, open? You think this one is open to the public? Yeah, I think, uh, I think this will be, oh, like, they never do them fight week not open to the public. If they're going to do one fight week, it's going to be open to the public. They should have shut down Times Square, man. That's crazy. Floyd used to get all a great promotion. Gone are the days of great promotion, bro. I wonder who was, like, in charge of the promoting back then. Because, bro, they shut down Times Square and had an entire press conference out there. Floyd signed so many gloves. It was so many fighters. It was so many people. It was crazy, bro. Um... And I get it. This ain't the one, right? Like, that was Mayweather Canelo. But I just always look back at that and see the numbers they did with a guy like Canelo who wasn't a gold medalist in Oscar. They they matched the numbers of Oscar but but did a higher gate, right? They matched the pay-per-view buys for sure. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong for about but the what, gate. But what? You talking about Canelo? Absolutely. Mayweather and Canelo... Did 2.4 and Mayweather and Oscar did 2.4. I they, think Mayweather and Oscar did 2.2. So then that means they matched the Oscar gate and six and surpassed the, the pay-per-view. Yeah, definitely beat that gate, I would feel like. Uh, I'm pulling up those pay-per-view numbers, though. But, you I know, know yeah, the, the, point, the point of that is just to say that, like, look at that promotion, huh? the level of that promotion and, and what it what it brought in. Obviously, we don't know, um, you know, how much they spent on those press conferences. I forgot the last promoter we had on, what do you say, 300000 per Samson. press conference? Yeah. That Samson. sounds like a bit so of inflation. Up. What do you think? Mm. You know you know more about rotten private jets than me, man. How much is it for them damn things? I mean, Not specifically that. I'm just saying you got to include that into the budget. Some of these dudes yeah, is getting I mean, on PJs. You talk like from Texas to New York, you're probably in the thirty thousand range, thirty five thousand dollar range. That's insane. From Ve Vegas to New York, somewhere forty to fifty plus. Man, them dudes crazy. I hope I hope the promoters writing that shit off. Like I get this on the back end. Yo, so, so I'm pretty sure Oscar does he not have his own jet or does he always charter? I don't know, man. But even your own jet fuel is a motherfucker. No, 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 for sure, for sure. I'm just asking. And then you got the pilots and shit. I feel like he flies private more than anybody, like that we are speaking of. And I just assumed, and I felt like he had his own jet. <laughs> Must be nice. Must be nice. Because I. I know for the New York and LA press conferences, like Dev flew with Oscar. Yeah, I mean, again, if these promoters were, were would work together, like 
I guess Bob could charter his shit out, right? Like, why pay them 30 when you could give me 20 or 25 and you cut and throw? You ain't using it today. You feel me? But I bet you they ain't even off that. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Matchroom is very interesting, bro. Uh, I'm walking through the Fontaine Blue here in Vegas on Saturday, and I'm making my way to the fight, right? Mm-hmm. And I see this guy, and I'm 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 looking at this guy. I'm like, yo, I know you. You the driver, right? The driver for Matchroom. New Matt York Trump. City, bro, they fly out their fucking drivers from New York. Instead of just hiring drivers here in the city or whatever city they're in, they fly out their drivers everywhere they go. So now that made me wonder, wait, are they like... Flying them out, then running trucks here, or like, bro, I could not believe it. Mm. And I think, I think, yeah, I think it it's a seem, network thing. Does I think seem it's a network costly. thing, but no, for sure, bro. I'm telling you, it's the same driver. And I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, bro, I know this guy. I walked up to him, and then I'm like, yo, who you here with? And then he's like, oh, with the promotion. I'm like, what the fuck? They flew you out? He's like, yeah. Mm. I'm like, oh, okay. So, hell, you know, hell, I don't hell know. Of a, maybe, hell of a driver, man. Hell of a driver. I mean, bro, that shit's crazy because usually you want drivers that are, like, very knowledgeable in your city. If you're flying them out from city to city, how much knowledge do you have? You I mean, know? there's also security, though. You feel more comfortable with him, you know what I'm saying? He knows what to do if you get intoxicated. You know, you know, he might throw that shirt over your head. Don't let nobody take pictures. All that goodness. I mean, he's just a driver, though. Again, maybe he's more than. That's why he's being flown out. Can't mm. buy loyalty, man. Can't buy friendship. Well, well... I'll say they do fly out their security as well because no, they, they have this, I see that. They, they have the same the security for every event. Yo, they got this one guy. I need to learn his name. We good. But boy, I made a comment to him he didn't fucking like. Mm. And, and he, he took offense to it. And I took offense to him taking offense to it. Oh. And I'm like, bro, all I said was like, I'm like, hey, man, smile. Oh, boy, that pissed him off. And, and uh, what, what now, way? now you know he's at every fucking event. No, but so in now what I way? In what way it pissed him off? Like, okay. He literally said, "He literally said, he like, who are you to tell me what to do?" And I start laughing. I'm like, I'm like, damn, bro, it's been that rough of a week, and he ain't like that either. So, so then what? Uh, I think uh, they called over Britney or some to see who I was with, and yeah, you know that guy. Squash, but I'm like, bro. Damn, I'm just so happy. Dude, you feel me? I want to get you up out of there. Happy, you feel he me? tried to get you up out of it just because you asked how Man, what? you were smiling. Nah, I I ain't ask him. I told him this, but again, he took offense to me telling him. I'm like, bro, I'm just, yeah, you know I mean, I'm just happy. My bad. I want to see y'all happy. Yeah, nah, the matchroom oh, securities, they like uh, former Navy SEALs or some shit. Nah, wow. look, one of them, bro, one of them I've actually gotten the chance to hang out with. You know, uh, he's from the Dallas area, so I was out there for a fight. We, a couple of us went out to eat and whatnot. Bro, this man uh, has been on like seven world tours with Shakira. And he was like, yeah, you know, they... They would uh, send us to do training with Navy SEALs before we go on tour with her. Told you these dudes be extra, man. They be extra. Nah, you you seen what you seen what they did with David? I I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm not mad that they put him on camera, but yo, I'm gonna say it. They set his ass up. What you mean? And the reason? What you mean? You seen what they did with David? No, yeah, I seen what they did. Hold on, hold on. They kept warning him over and over and over. The security kept warning him. He was in the cage, you know, the corral where they have the commission and the promoters. Then on the outside is the ticket, the ticketed people. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, they got the cage around the ring. That's where he's at. They kept telling him over and over to sit down because he was standing up, you know, yelling to his boy Diego. Mm -hmm. They waited 
to bring the camera over to him. And then the moment they brought the camera to him, they escorted him out. All these warnings, they had plenty of opportunity to escort him out. But they waited till they did the interview. And then as soon as he got done with the interview, they escorted him out. So th- so he was on the other side of the cage, still front row, but now on the other side of the cage with the general public versus where the promoters sit. And I was watching him now. The whole time they kept warning him, and I'm just like, "Yo, if he's if he's if he's giving y'all so much so much trouble, escort him out." I told this to the media that's sitting that's sitting with me, and then I turned to him. I'm like, "Oh, that's what they was waiting for. They was waiting to interview him." The moment the camera walk away, boom! They 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 walk him they walk him out. This was during the fight. The fight I mean, wasn't even I mean, over. I Nothing. mean, they just put him on the other side where he can stand up and not be in the way of the camera. Remember, on that side you're gonna be on television. And you're going to be obstructing the view of the people behind you that's on television and don't look good, you know. Uh, so maybe that's all. They just switched him to the other side where he can stand up. No? Hey, look. Uh, I wasn't there for the conversations or they thought process, so you could be right. But uh, the way the situation was... Uh, the way the situation played out in front of my eyes, I saw something else. For sure. Um, did you have a chance to see the announcement for the Canelo undercard? I did, yes, sir. What you think? I did, yes, sir. Um, hey, that's a funny ass comment. Shout out to Ruin the Five Hundred Four says TBV has always had some issues with matchroom bodyguards. <laughs> Word. That's what I'm telling you. That's how I know they Navy SEALs. Them dudes be extra. Extra, extra. Yeah, I, yeah Earthquake. I was just saying, turn that frown upside down. Wow. <laughs> hey, no, let me stop. Let me stop. Uh, we got James Benitez. Will Devin take all the blame once this pay-per-view fails? Uh, we got Box for Money with the $10 Super Chat. Why am literally... You froze, champ. Ryan literally uh, came came in the press conference on a horse with virgins. Why are y'all complaining about promotion? Shaking my head. Tell Devin to do something other than make a shirt for promo. I mean, feel like uh, feel like the videos he's put out better than what the zones put out. If I'm being quite honest. But I get what he's saying. Ryan did pay to do some big shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm. Twice now, I think he did, right? For both, right? One was bigger I mean, than the other. I mean, bro, like... He hired one his was own a girls. Chair. One was a chair and some little, some little fake rose petals that you throw on. You you know in the motel back in the day when you had your side piece little rose petals plus right? plus and the then, women he had to hire to do that and be there remember he made it he made it uh, clear that he was like oh I want to do something so they got those girls last minute nah nah no bro the, you ain't see like the whole the whole thing with they knew ahead of time bro they were trying to get those girls so bad that word got back like hey they're looking for women. For this press conference tomorrow like the whole horse shit and everything like all that shit got you know it's la is a big city but it's a small city you know when you know a lot of the same people so you know they i don't know champ i mean i don't devin don't look like the uh horseback riding kind of each i don't know uh, uh what about two-tones idea that dev should have came with money and counted the money and kind of introduced them to the dev dollars angle uh i feel like that's something he gotta want to do i don't think he gonna do nothing like that uh you know just because or like for attention i felt like you know maybe he could have did like the devin bucks you know how Usher had the Usher Bucks? He could have did like the Devin Bucks. What the I don't hell know. is that? So Usher, Usher went to a strip club out here to promote his upcoming residency. 
Mm-hmm. But instead of throwing real dollar bills, he had like these usher usher bucks. Now there was like this whole controversy because they were like apparently the ladies were able to cash those usher bucks in for real money at the end of the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, some women were claiming that they didn't get paid, but yeah, he was you know he was there throwing like money with his face on it, and instead of you know. United States of America said, you know, Usher and Usher Bucks or whatever. That's funny. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? Like, if he would have did something like that, boom, promoting a fight, cool. But, uh, you know, he could have had, like, a dollar bill with his face on it, you know, 420 on the corner. You know, I don't know, something to promote it, but I feel like there's just better ways or, like, more effective ways and I don't know, getting out of character. We're just doing something that's out of your character. So what are you recommending? We still got time 10 days out. Uh, Man, I recommend a bunch of media, and then I, I recommend you go out what, the traditional way Taylor media? Plant, Taylor Plant um, uh, uh, press conference. I feel oh, like somebody oh, got to put their hands smack, on each other. You got to smack them. Yeah, yeah, you smack them a little bit. I don't think I, I you definitely that would create, don't want to fight. Would be a bi- he would you don't want to fight to break out. You don't want to fight no, to break out. No, but if out. he smacks him, he'll be a villain. Plus, it's New York. He might get fined. Where, where was playing? That's at? cool. That's cool. Okay, we cool with the fine. I, I just well, then he I should go like, for the smack. He was like, the one. He the one like, got pushed just, first, so he should go for the smack. I just, I just feel like I just feel like it's a small price to pay. You know, um, media work. I just want your thoughts. Am I tripping or or, or how how do you feel Ryan looks? Not not like nah, working I think out. Ryan, oh yeah, no, I mean like what? Cause I was like, gonna say, yeah, was? he look he looked good, like doing the shit with, with, with Derek. How how you feel he looked weight wise? Cause no I ain't noticed I'm calling I ain't noticed anything. I'm calling I'm calling cap on that weight that was posted. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, it's whatever. Obviously, you only got to make the weight once, so that's what matters. But I'm calling cap on that weight that was posted. <laughs> so you think he's heavier? Hell yeah! Did hmm. you see the weight that got posted by Mauricio? No. They trying to tell us 14 days out he's only six pounds over. I mean, you know, he's young. Runs a lot. He says he runs a lot. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, from what I saw, that one can't look 46 for me. Not, not, especially, bro, two weeks out, don't even, why would you be that close in weight? He working. That just shows he working, bro. It's not that, you know, sometimes when you working, you ain't cutting. You ain't, you know, it's just coming off. He's in Houston. He was in Houston, you know. Um, well, Dallas. Dallas, you know, it's hot, in, it's hot in, in Derek's gym. Shit could be melting off. That's what, uh, that's what uh, David likes about Miami. He, felt, he feels like, he's, you know, it's easier to make the weight. That's why he relocated. One lump sum, two dollars. Talk to people out of pocket. People don't play. Okay. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It's gonna help with the visibility of the show. Putting this episode in the eyes of other boxing fans that don't know we rocking out er day. And if you want to call in, Twitter Spaces and Discord is available to do so. Lake County, five dollars. They should do a special episode or two of Wildin' Out, Team Haney versus Team Garcia, both as team captains before the fight promoting the pay-per-view date. I don't know how big Wildin' Out is. Is that reach multiple Yeah, audiences? I don't know how big that is either. Like, I feel like usually you just see reruns, you feel me? Hmm. Phone lines open. We got Ant in Atlanta. What up? What up, family? Yo, yo, I tried to tell y'all. I tried to tell you. I called and tried to tell you, Ness. 
when uh, when Dev was at them parties doing that weird shit, talking about some, I've been waiting my whole life to get in this party. I wonder why. Hmm, I wonder why. Maybe it's a status thing, you know, because Diddy's the parties bitches. were pretty big. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of hoes, but there's a lot of a lot of niggas too. It's a lot of cheek no, busting the, going no, I'm just on. Saying, at that's what that, that that's literally what he said. Like that's what yeah. asked why was he there? Like that's the bitches. Yeah, he lied. He lied because uh, he was in the pool shirtless, taking pictures with Diddy and shit. You know, get you rubbed get in up the pool on with your shirt on, champ. Not with another nigga. Uh, that's a fact. I'm not. I'm not letting nobody I mean, rub up on so me wait, like that. So wait. So wait. So wait. You never been in the pool with another man? Not like that. Not not posing up arm to arm and shit. Talking about <laughs> something I've been waiting my whole life. You, you know, funny. for this moment. Nah. Y'all funny as hell. Now motherfuckers nah, rent the pool out. You got your own pool. Would you let let me know how it worked? Did you always have your own pool, even through childhood? This guy, would you had a scuba suit on no, when no, you went no. to the Y, motherfucker? What are no, you talking and, about? And now, <laughs> now you taking a picture next to somebody. Now we arm and arm. Yo, did he pick him up? Oh, uh, well, I, I, he probably did. Confused with somebody. Hey, hey, hey. There's one thing that I'm we do a, know is did he had a I'm lot of cameras. Out. He 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 had yeah. a lot of cameras around that house, so 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 we better not get no audio of you know what I'm saying. Dead I'm just saying, have busted. you seen the footage of him being picked up? Because I've seen footage of other be people being picked up. Yeah, I know what you get that. I know what you get that. Arm, they wasn't even touching yeah. champ. So and guess so what? I, and guess I, what? I now know that you caught Danny. a lie. So I'm just trying to see how many Danny. other lies yeah. and, you and, got. And guess what? Tank ain't go to the party because he know what go down at the party. He meet Diddy random like, oh hey, what up, Diddy? And then Diddy lifted Bro, him up. So they was so shit. that was in somebody's house. That was in somebody's house, right? No, they not. They just met up. It was like, oh, what up? There's Diddy right oh, there. He okay. wasn't at no fucking said, party okay. shirtless. He said, yeah, that's, that's Diddy right down. there. That's Diddy right you know? there. You funny. Because that, because that, yeah, that's because because that what it seemed like he owned, man. So I really hope the video don't come out. I hope he ain't do no crazy shit at them parties. But we know what goes down at Diddy's parties. It's a big ass freak off. Let's be honest. It, it all came out. You we know what's from up. Experience or? I'm yeah. not speaking hey, for research. Hey yo, why you research. acting like? Why you acting like? Uh, it's only, uh, you know, like you know, <laughs> why you acting like it's only crazy shit going on, bro? It is. He a freak. He a freak of all freaks. This man been putting baseball bats up chicks' vaginas, oh, bro. doing all kind of yo, crazy yo, stuff. Yo, yo, daytime television. What the fuck? I mean, it happened. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you the truth, but the truth That's is the, the truth. Bell, Ain't player. That's the bell, man. He was happy for that. Shit. He been waiting for this call. I'm t I can tell, boy. This is what I walk into. I'm trying to listen to some boxing talk. I'm hearing baseball bats and hoo has <laughs> What the? Oh my god, man! My dude, that's your man sitting there who just got off the line from Georgia. Well, it is Georgia, for real. Georgia. I mean, but I what's mean, the word? man, is it promotion to you? Uh, it's bad promotion if it is, man. Um, I, I think it's just, we just live in an era, man, where everybody wants to break a story. Everything is content and, um, people are, 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 I don't know. Man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, man. I, if it's, if it is marketing, it's terrible. Terrible, man. I wouldn't even go that route. To each his own, man. I, I was kind of confused as to what the what the logic was behind. But nah, I, I, don't I know, mean, man. he called in about a month ago with the same shit when the picture dropped. So you know, he 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 he's been uh, down that angle. And bro, yo, but but did Virgil ever clear that up? Virgil, who Ortiz? Because you know, there's some images of Virgil Ortiz out here as well, what? salacious on the internet. Virgil Ortiz, who the boxer? Yeah. What? Man, I don't know. I, I, gonna, I, don't I, know I, I send it in the pre-pro, man. They got they got Virgil, you know what I'm saying, eating groceries, and I'll leave it at that. Allegedly. It might be a deep fake photo thing. What? Because he responded to it. Yeah, he responded to it like, yo. But he didn't say, like, that was not me. He said, yo, y'all chill on the internet with the picture. 
What? I, I, I'll send it to pre-pro, man. <laughs> Damn, I thought I don't be missing shit. What in the fuck? Uh, wild, wild, wild. Okay, we going. No, my out- bad. My bad. It wasn't. It wasn't Virgil. It was Ryo. It was Ryo. Uh, yeah, I don't Wrong know. Wrong guy. Wrong guy. I don't know. I ain't see that. Huang. In Houston. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was an AI generated thing that I'm even talking about. Yo, 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 yo. You got me. We got you. Yeah, man. I, you know, I, I hear a lot of people saying they don't think it's gonna sell, but I, I think what Danny was saying is like how you talked about he had the last minute buy a ticket. I think a lot of people gonna do that because I ain't gonna lie. Even though I'm not a big Ryan fan, I'm, I'm more of a Devin fan. Ryan do got a following, and he's popping up everywhere. He's got that comedian Charleston White on a tour bus with him and another influencer, Aiden Ross. You know, he you got to think about it. He do bring a different set of eyes, man. So I think it's too premature wait, to have be negative. Wait, wait, wait. Aiden Ross is on a tour bus with Ryan? Yeah, it's Aiden Ross, uh, Ryan, and that Charleston White, that black comedian from the Dallas area. And they, somebody, they, Charleston White started talking shit about Islam, right? And then Ryan's like, nah, yo, I'm not, I'm not with that. He's like, you know, I'm shout out to all my Muslim, you know, followers. I, you know, I don't get disrespectful like that. I, I respect all religions. And Aiden Ross is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you uh, know, and my son showed me that. You know what I'm saying? But I do think there's some of them sentiments uh, about him not showing up because last night I'm getting my hair cut and I'm telling the barber like, yeah, this is good. He's like, there's boxing cut. I, saying, so we, I don't know how to sub- Oh, we're talking about the Mike Tyson Jake Paul fight. And then I was like, man, but I'm waiting for that. Hey, hey uh, Garcia's coming up. And he goes, the guy, the other barber next to me, he's listening to me talking to my barber. goes, it's not going to happen. Garcia. <laughs> you breaking up, champ. <laughs> Bodo never talking to pre pro, but they dropped that picture. He talking about damn Virgil look like he having fun. <laughs> nah, yo, Huang, you there? Okay, so it was Virgil. Okay, I was right the first time. That shit look fake though. That's not Virgil at all, bro. Like. That's nah, that ain't. <laughs> neither, is, neither is the fake. No, let me, let me tell you though. Let me tell you. I'm not gonna say I know, but the day this picture came out, there was another picture of another uh, Hispanic fighter doing the same thing. Well, that's why I so, guess I got confused with Ryo and Virgil. I think it was between the two of them. There was some confusion. Yeah. So, so Ryo. Nah, was there's the other another one. one. You ain't see the Ryo one with 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 with, with uh, Mia Khalifa looking like, but that ain't Ryo either, bro. Yeah. That's wow, what I'm man. saying. All this shit fake. It's like yo, they it's got like, the pictures of King Amin out there. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like yo, how the fuck is people even getting confused? Like that shit is mad, wild, obvious that it's not them. But, but let me go back I mean, to bro, I mean, I mean, Virgil, no, wait, Virgil wait. Virgil responded and said, it's not me. <laughs> bro, but literally, I just saw a video. I just saw a video. Shit had 150,000 views yesterday. Damn. And, and that's just it. David Benavidez sparring Gennady Golovkin. And it was at the... Uh, it was at the old mansion, bro. So I knew it wasn't Golovkin. Yeah. And bro, people, Daniel people was Blanc- like, it's probably Daniel Blancas. Bro, people were sharing, retweeting, commenting like a motherfucker. And it was already at 150,000 views. And I I wasn't I wasn't there that day, but I know for a fact it wasn't Golovkin. So this was my problem with this sort of marketing. It's like Ryan is just saying <laughs> hey, yo, anything. Virgil like, said. Virgil said, y'all need to chill with the picture, man. Y'all know which one I'm talking about with the crying emoji. <laughs> he put his not me. <laughs> he said, y'all know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious, bro. Why they trying to ruin Virgil's relationship and shit? What the fuck? 
but this is kind of what we was talking about yesterday, man, with with with, the, with what you're choosing to use as marketing, man. Like some of this shit, it's funny to discuss, but it's like you know, you know, it's only but so far you can go before bruh, you. Either... Bro, you got to think about it. Like the the porn industry is huge, man. I forget. I watched the documentary. I don't have the stat, but I watched the documentary, and uh, I, I, it's like it's like. Porn is like the number one search thing on the internet, bro. And those parody films where they, you know, mock like a real life person, those are, are pretty popular. It was an actress named Lisa Ann who was pretty popular around the time when Sarah Palin was in the election. She made a pretty good career off of uh, parodying, um, you know, yeah, political Yeah, person. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I think I remember the the the, the fake uh, <laughs> Sarah Palin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you you might pop see a, a fake Diddy, you know what I mean? Joint, you know. But West Coast Productions ain't around no more. I think that's the only credible outfit that could have handled such a venture. But it's another story. <laughs> Shout out to Amin with his historical porn <laughs> information. He said West Coast Productions. <laughs> yeah, I know a little bit about everything, man. The king in here. Yo, we got bands. What up? Bro. Yo. My uncle. My uncle used to be in that industry back in the day, and he says that uh, the date that he took my aunt, like they first date, he uh, he said he showed her one of his, Movies. you know, one of his work. <laughs> yeah, and, that motherfucker and, crazy. You know, they've been they've been together ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Benz, what up? Twenty years already. Shout out to them, man. Twenty years, beautiful. Uh, love, you know what love can do. Benz, you gotta unmute, player. We cannot hear you. All right, C Dub. Yo, I mean, so is yo, that what yo. you minored in in college? Yes, we I was hear definitely you, C-Dub. an ologist. A Adult studies. <laughs> Yo, yo, how are you? That's what's up. Straight. So you hear me next? That's what's C-Dub, up. C-Dub, we hear you. Yo, yo. No, shout out TBV. Smash that like button. It's free. Do something with yourself. Shout out Ness. Shout out Wing, Ring Walk. Shout out uh, King Amin. We here. Hey, man. Uh, Don't try to blame Oscar and Golden Boy for this. Shout out to The Zone. That's, you know, who, shout out that's who Leonard is blaming and Goosen. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, just to the people, man, you know, I, I don't want anybody to attack me, you know, just, just, it's just a general statement to the people, man, you know, <laughs> just because I know we have some uh, Devin, you know, some Devin fanatics on here, but uh, shout out to the zone, shout out Devin, shout out to the boxing fans, you know, for turning up to this, seem like it's going to be a movie, you know, this is supposed to be one of the biggest events of this year, you know, we are trying to find a scapegoat right now, and they're going to look for a scapegoat. You know, but I, I don't see. I'm not sure. Has Devin been on Casanet? Anybody seen? Because I see Ryan with Aiden Ross. You know, is Devin with Casanet? What is that? A Spanish station? No, yeah, that's, see, that's one of the streamers. See, Danny still don't know the influencers. He still don't get it. You don't get it. Everybody I mean, got to get in don't, on this one. Nuts don't. But the other guy just posted Devin. Tom Bowes. Yeah. He tried to say that uh, he got that Devin scared him at the mosque or some shit. So, yeah, yeah. We just we just got to get more of it. Oh, more, oh, more promo. you talking about that 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 dude with the glasses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stream. Well, ain't he that old? Ain't that old though? Yeah, but in a couple weeks, right, month, man. something like that. It's all right, man. People got to deal with the comparisons now. They're tanking, rolling, selling out the same place. Was were they in a different room? Like, cause I know the garden got different rooms and shit. Like, nah, but Devin and Tank, I mean, De- Devin and Ryan, in the- one spot, baby. <laughs> and Devin and Ryan, you know, they not, it ain't sold out yet. This, this Devin undisputed, Devin the dream, Dev I mean, dollars. Let's be clear, let's be clear. Tank ain't sell, sell out. Like they didn't sell out to the day of. Like, okay, that, I just, okay, boom. I just told y'all, I just told y'all, I bought a ticket on my way to the fight for the girl I was with. Like tickets ain't sell oh, out till day of. Uh, the story. 
Okay, this is Mr. Gatorade, though. This King Rye. He just did 1.3 in price tickets. Nah, he they, actually ain't Mr. Are... Gatorade no more. They they dropped his ass after everything he's been doing. So he's not Mr. Gatorade. Oh, I can't shit. confirm, but uh, my sources tell me GMC dropped them too. But I can't confirm GMC just 1800. Yet. I, I can. 18, I 1800 can still got him, though. <laughs> No, eighteen hundred is probably part of the problem, but that's another story that you yeah. tequila. You know, you know he gonna promote that, but yeah, this this sounded like a movie, man. This is like a walk up movie. Green walk doing the, the guard pulling on the sweep, getting out in front. <laughs> Damn, he said doing the sweep. Uh so C dub, that was the bell. Appreciate you not commenting on the topic. I'm telling you, though, that's why I said it. This is going to be one of them joints, people that are in town in New York for whatever the weekend, and they're going to be like, yo, what's, what's, what's jumping? Yo, you know it's a fight at the Barclays. Oh, word. And like I said, you know, there is a constituent that, for those that are not geographically inclined, we we, you, we talked a lot about the geography from the Jersey side of things, but when you talk about, you know, Brooklyn, Queens, and Long Island, they're all actually on the same island. So you will get a lot of traffic from those from Long Island. And Long Island is pretty affluent, mostly suburban. So you might get people that's just like, yeah, I just want to shoot out to the city for the weekend. Um, so you, you could get a pretty good uh, walk-up uh, turnout, man. Well, well, well. I hope, I hope, man. Um, I feel like the Barclays has always been a, a spot that has done well, uh, you know, obviously Tank broke records, but before him, Danny set a few and broke a few, you know. Danny set one, then broke it with Thurman, and now Tank has broken that. So, uh, yeah, people usually come out. Wilder has fought there, and, uh, you know, I think he fought Spielka there. And who else? Do you remember? Yep. No, nah, he fought Ortiz there, too. No, nah, uh, he Wild fought Ortiz. Spilka, Ortiz. He fought Hellenius. Yeah, man. So. He almost killed Spilka. It's Brooklyn. always been a good venue for boxing, and people always turn up. Uh, you know, they 16,500 for Danny and Keith. Yeah, they good. They good for, for, for anywhere from, like, 14 to 18 depending who's fighting, right? Like, I feel like Colazzo Victor Ortiz did good. Was it Colazzo Victor Ortiz? I think Colazzo Victor Ortiz did good there. Well, I'm pretty sure that Danny Thurman is in second, so... I'm sure Danny Zab the, did good the, too. The, yeah, the Danny only one... Zab, I think, set a record, and then Danny Thurman broke it. Yeah, the only one that actually sold out to full capacity was Tank. Yeah. No other fighter actually sold out. And where he went? 18, right? Yeah, it was 18 and change, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, that's see. all the scaling, because that, that does more than 18, especially with the nah, four. Nah, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's all I'm the scaling, sure. Danny, because remember when, when Thurman and Danny fought there, they called that a sellout, and that was like 16 and some change. It's all about yeah, how but they... That's what I'm, yeah, 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 but that's what I'm saying. 100% of the venue, only Tang's done that. So, yeah, shit gets scaled down. You know, Bob Barham called like 6,000 at Staples Center a sellout because he curtained off 80% of the venue when Loma fought there, you know? Yeah, I'm just saying I'm... that I'm, that I'm, Yeah, no, no, that's how they get around it. That literally is scaling. You're 100% correct. That's how they get around they it. Because they got to take seats out for cameras. They got shit curtained off for, 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 for the equipment always. And some of that stuff be dead middle of seats and sections that they can't even use no more. So, uh, you know, it all depends yeah. on the venue. No, for sure. I mean, like some fights, they going to uh, curtain off a section or two other fights. They're going to curtain off an entire upper bowl. Upper bowl, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was 18,974 Roley and, and Tank. So almost nineteen thousand us. For Roly and Tank, nineteen. That's nice. Cause I think Gennady. Eighteen. What, what eighteen. Nine seventy. Gennady did like twenty in with Lemieux in Madison Square. Pretty sure, but uh, 
I got Big If. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Absolutely free. Yo, salute, man. Y'all can hear me. Yes, sir. We hear you. Salute to Ness, man. Salute to Dan. Salute to uh, Amin. Amin, pause. My no Diddy, but you brought me back to uh, I believe it was she was it was called um nailing palin, man. And I, I believe <laughs> there you go, I believe that, <laughs> yo, I believe they had a Barack Obama version too, man. I'm ashamed for knowing that, but I I remember that, man. <laughs> that was some crazy Educated, days. Educated, brother. Don't but, worry about it. <laughs> yo, but uh, uh, yo, I remember. I mean, you said yesterday, man. Um, you were trying to do something with um, uh, some type of um, I guess like a documentary or something on um, on Clarissa Shields or something. No, man. I said um, actually, I'm glad you mentioned. Writing that a letter. Today's, writing a letter. Yeah, yeah. Today's episode when I upload on the championship rounds, it's actually going to be you know part of the episode. I'm going to dedicate a heartfelt uh, letter to her, if you will. I'm going to, you know, just, just express myself to her. I've actually reached out to her a number of times, but I know I'm, I'm too small on the scale of things, but eventually we'll cross paths in a way with which, you know, we could, we could share our views, man. But, um, Hey, if you got a line to a letter, no, man, I'm a, I'm a credible individual. No, nah, I don't got a line, but I was saying that because, uh, I, I, there's a chick I follow. I don't know if y'all know her as Jada the boxer. She was uh, Clarissa's yes, right hand. Talking movie. a lot about that. Yeah. Yeah, so she has, she's been like going crazy. I don't know if it's too salacious, but she's nah, been going crazy. I, I going think crazy I seen crazy. that. Is that the girl that's claiming that, that Clarissa used to used to P Diddy her? Yeah, and um, I, I don't want to say the name, but um, some and a, and some a trainer um, and a trainer P Diddy. Trainer, yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't want to say that, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. touch it because I don't know her, and it's like, how do you, you know? And plus, that I'm not tabloid, you know what I'm saying? Like that's something, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like she gotta, you know, I don't even know how to go about that. Go about that now, nah, facts. I feel you on that. I thought that was probably what I, uh, I mean was alluding to. So I just wanted to put it out there. But yo, what's the word on um on Dev Dollars, man? Um, yo, the title is wild, funny too, man. <laughs> Accuse of <laughs> yo Garcia as a, as a bug out man. That that title is funny. But what's the word on the sales man? They not um they haven't filled out the Barclays yet, or what's the word on that? Not like yet, skinny, not bro. yet. Damn, damn. I thought with the antics though, this is going that's going to sell out. That's what I thought the whole um antics was about. But yeah, um, I, I mean, hope they sell out, man. You still got time. You sound like you're from the city and shit. Is it a walk-up crowd or do they usually sell out? Because, you know, we just talked about Tank not selling out till the day of. I mean, my thing, though, is like with the antics, with the Garcia antics, the stuff been everywhere, like non-boxing sites. Yeah, so that's I thought how maybe... I feel. That's how I feel. I thought it would already been sold out because of that. I feel like everything he said has gotten picked up by so many different outlets because it's so wild. Uh, but yeah, they ain't translating to themselves. But anyway, salute to y'all, man. I'm, I, I, I hope, I hope it sells out because I know it's a good fight, regardless. Um, I got Dev Dollars or Devin Bieber, according to um Garcia. Um, I got him winning. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it is what it is, man. I'm out. Peace. <laughs> he said Devin Bieber, not terrible, bro. Wow, the only sold six thousand tickets. 762 was comp, and he only did a gate of 1.4 million. So right now, what, Dev and uh, yeah, with Hellenius. Right now, Dev and and Ryan doing better than that. They already sold 10 plus thousand. Melvin, what up? Yo, what up? How y'all morning? All good. And. I don't really want to talk about the topic because the simple fact that's like bad for business, the way he going about promoting it, because first of all, I don't want to hear about no shit about that. I just want to see about you, what you going to do in the fight, and how you going to handle business in that ring come on April 20th. But I already got my pick on Devin whooping the shit out of his ass. Another thing that I got is uh, I hope he knock him out in the first round because on, Be on Bavada, shit, them fucking odds is amazing right now. But you know why. What do you mean I know why? When the odds is amazing, it's because it's not likely. When the odds are tight, it's because it is likely. What's the odds Bro. of Devin getting a knockout in the first 
round, my dude. When's the last time he got a knockout in the first round? I mean, shit, anything's possible when you lace yeah. up. You know for that. For sure, for sure. But that's like a $5 bet type shit, bro. Yeah, I feel that. I you better feel off, that. You better off betting like the group rounds. Like Because I'm just one, saying, Devin, Devin is a boxer. So, like, to say that the boxer's not going to come out and – and, and 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 what do we do in the first round as boxers? You 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 take that round and try to figure him out. You know, fuck. Floyd was infamous for giving away of the first couple of rounds. So it's like, I don't know, but you know, teachers on. Hey, if you win, send me something, man. Yeah, for sure. I'm just saying, you know, I'm hoping he knock his ass out in the first round because of all the shit he been talking that about. That would be, oh my God, that would be the best thing that could ever happen to Devin and to the tank fight because then we'd get the fight. If yeah, we get, have to. If he get a knockout and he do for it sure. before Devin, oh my God, we get the fight. The pressure Hell is yeah. on, I don't bro. know. Nah, Danny, I don't know the, that the we on. automatically get it. No, the nah, pressure is definitely on because he did something to that man that Yo, that's why fucking... Pacquiao Mayweather was so big because Pacquiao would do what Mayweather couldn't do. You know exactly. Exactly, my guy. Exactly. He's going to do something that that man never done and you're going to have to... It's going to be you're pressure gonna not to only from him. him. You're going to have to see him. Everybody, the, the streets is going to be like, hey, fam, I mean, you telling me Charlie Man gonna watch Devin Haney knock out Ryan Garcia in the first round and not be on tank? Like, yo, bro, you you gotta fight this dude. Like, he did it to Earl. He did it to Crawford. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, people won't want it. I just don't think it'll happen. That's all. Nah, Man, the you, the chances is likely. I mean, I, I but I'm you. just Danny's saying. the pessimist. I'm the optimist. I, I gotta stop. <laughs> I just gotta stop uh, hating on him. That's just the way he is, man. That's just the way he is. Nah, look. Look, true story. I literally told told uh, Alicia this because she was surprised. I'm like, I told her I don't think we ever see that fight. Like, I think they retire and, and we never see that fight. Nah, and I, you know, wilding. I broke it down to you're it. wilding. Listen, with, with with Isak being in the position he's in now, that fight is more probable than anything. Uh, Shakur is not a bigger fight than Tio, Devin, Isak. You know, maybe Shakur's definitely Shakur's bigger than Matias fight for for Tank, uh, but I'm not even sure about that because the fact that Matias could punch, and Tank is a puncher, and Tank's who he is, he gonna bring him out. Uh, I don't even know. I, all I'm well, saying, I think I'm location saying, matters. Let me, let me I think location matters. Let me finish. All I'm trying to say is that it's only but so long Tank can stay at 35. Like the bit, like to keep making the money he making, he gonna have to see, you know, the 40 pound division eventually. Whether that no, means- I think he's gonna go down to 30. Not what Kenny told me. Shit. Yeah, but that ain't gonna make him no money. I, I'm with Ness on that. He what, gotta go. What, what, what he gonna do like Navarrete at 30? No, I'm talking about anyway. I'm talking about anyway. Man, pipe oh. train. All right, Niz, bro. I'm out of here. He ain't saying it anyway, man. I'm out of here. Yeah. I mean, what bro, you mean, that bro? Crazy, like, y'all mad at me because his promoter said it? Like, nah, nah, none nah. Said that. We just, nah, we just, like, 130. Hey, shout out to Melvin with that fire. Uh, and, fire and he red. was saying, like, hypothetically, if, if in a way were to move up to 30, you know, as he's already undisputed 22. Marcos. Yeah, he just hit 22. And he's still already, what, 30 years old? I don't know. It's a big I'm, jump. I mean, he just hit 22, but he already undisputed. Like, you think I give a fuck or you think the boxing world gives a fuck about the Luis Neri fight? Not at I mean, it's, it's happening, that. and it's happening. And, yeah, the boxing world occurs. Drew spent 3000 I mean, I'm. I mean, no, no, no. He cares because he, like, in a way, but I'm just saying it's a, like, it's another name on his resume. But, again, bro, like. They lifted a lifetime ban just to allow Neri to fight. So it's like before, in a way, he was banned for life. Now, like I could care less about the fight, me personally. You're I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it, but I know what's gonna happen. I mean, the guys are minus one thousand going into the fight. You tell me. Coach Kenny just told me recently. If anything, they can make one thirty. So I was like, what about 140? He goes, oh, he's walking around under 140 now. He's like, if anything, who's, who's, on 130. 130, who's at 130 on PBC? 
That's just what he told no, me. Rematch again, with Androide. I'm... Don't you know that, Ness? Huh? The rematch with Androide. Don't you know? Fire emojis. Nah. Androide Garcia. Nah, he's not going to do it. I'm telling you. Tank ain't going to 130 for nameless names. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, 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 no. No, I'm saying one name and one name only, but that's the same name that Leonard just spoke, you know, on Sean Porter's podcast. Mm. I got uh, Anthony B, $3 cash app. Ask Danny what he thinks about 300 on Saturday. What the fuck is that, Danny? Uh, the, it's supposed to be this... I mean, it's not supposed to be. It's a UFC pay-per-view, but they've been selling it as the biggest one in the history of the sport. Uh, yeah, man, I think the undercard is good. I think the main event is a bit underwhelming. Um yeah, I mean, I'll be watching, but I won't. Again, I don't think the the main event's the greatest, but I'll be tuned in. I got Kerry G with the counter. What up, Buenos Dias? That was part of the reason people kept saying, "Oh, it was only Canelo." Once I spoke to the commission, they said that UFC three hundred had a big part on why Haney and Garcia couldn't land out here, too. The properties didn't want back-to-back weekends with pay-per-views, and they also didn't want, um, you know, like I said, the three in the four weeks, three within four weeks span. Um, Kerry G, you haven't connected, homie. Jump out, jump back in. G Vaughn. If you're watching this on YouTube, 1300 reminder, smash the thumbs up. Jivon, you got to unmute? In the meantime, Marco, what up, man? What's crack a lacking, I mean? Another J. Jivon, Jivon. Yesterday was nice. Today is not so nice. Why is not so nice, Marco? What happened? Yesterday you was, was almost, tired. Nah, it was almost 80 degrees yesterday. Literally nice, like outside, I meant. Today is like, what, 50-something? g you might need to like jump your... out, jump back in, brother. What is that, Twitter? Tripping like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, he need to jump out. That's what it is. Kerry G, usually when that happens, that's what y'all need to do. Like, see, it's still happening for yeah. you too, Kerry. Oh, G, you there? I think I think it's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Discord's still not working, man. This shit crazy, man. Um, shout out TBV, going on. It fellas. Worked. I don't good know morning, what's going morning. on with that because it. We just had uh, what's this guy's name? Anthony was on there. We just had two calls on there twice. Yeah, I mean, I I think I think and it only works if. for certain people. That's Melvin I think Jones it's only working also. For a couple people. That's why, that's why, like, now it'd be, like, six people over there because I think only a couple people are actually still working. I, I, I don't know why people working, why people are not working over there. But, um, yeah, man, look, another beautiful day in boxing, right? Um, where, where, where's P. Diddy from? He's from New York, right? He's from uh, Yonkers, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, so he's yeah, from New, New York. York. Yeah. So, uh, you know... Conspiracy theory is the reason why the fight is happening in New York is because to repay a favor for a favor. You know what I mean? With Haney and shit. That's why Ryan was so mad about it. Like, hey, why we got to do this shit in New York? And everybody knows, you know, the favor was owed to Diddy and shit. Um, <laughs> hey. They got the tape, man. They got the tape. This shit was crazy, <gasps> man. Uh, for for Ryan to be saying that shit during media workout, you know, you can't trust that man after the booty's been tickled. But uh, his words, oh. not mine. Shit sounds crazy. Hey, shit, hey, Marco, don't be mad at me because this is real life, man. This shit happens in real life, man. Uh, but oh. look, man. Uh, I I just don't. I just really don't know why it's happening out there. If it was in the West Coast. See, because people are talking about how Tank sold out out there, man. Tank is from the East Coast. Like, it's only like a, what, five-hour drive from Baltimore to get up That's to New York That's a long drive, but there was a lot of Baltimore Three dudes jam. out here. 
Go ahead. You you say that's you you say that's a long drive, but here in California, every weekend there's people from Northern Cali going to Southern Cali every fucking. Now, weekend. I'm not saying they wouldn't do it. That's a five six it. hour drive. I agree with you. They would do it. But so what I'm saying is, if if Haney and and Regis did they they didn't do so good at the pay per view, but as far as the gate goes, they almost sold out the Chase Center. So if if you had someone yeah, like but nothing Ryan was available to the summer champ. Well, yeah, I mean, so that's the whole issue, like. You know, for people to downplay the whole fight, like the but fight as a whole. But that's why Ryan say, hey, wanted to push it sell. back. That's why Ryan wanted to push it back. Like, I'm gonna keep saying that because we want to call Ryan crazy, but he said the pay per view. Uh, uh, he said that the the ticket prices was expensive the day of the New York press conference, and he said uh, he's the one that wanted to push it back to July to give him more time to promote. So, you know, yeah, those but, were two good yeah, recommendations. But yeah, but yeah. But yeah, he was trying to push it back before ticket uh tickets even when uh was announced. Like let's not forget that was not New York, because that was LA. They did not have ticket information in New York. I mean, evidently they did. He brought because it up and Oracle. he was right. So like what, what, that was what, what, LA. Oh, Danny, Danny, what do you want us to believe? That he guessed it and was right, or that he had in that he knew and was right? Champ. I'm telling you, you got your cities mixed up, but it's all good. Okay, I got my cities yeah. mixed up. Did he or did he not say that the ticket prices was high and his fans was complaining and yeah, he was yeah, going to do yeah. his best to bring them yes, down? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. All the yes, ticket prices, did. were the ticket prices high? Uh, I don't know where they're at now. No. I didn't think they were when high. When they started, were they when, high? When they started, were they when high? They, no. No. Danny, we're not talking about pre-sale. We're talking about once all the ticket masters and all these oh, people yes, get yes, the fucking yes, ticket. Yes. You know, it's yeah. it's it's very hard with you. I don't know why you do this. Like you're on camera, my No, bro. no. Like No, I get that. I get that. <laughs> but it's crazy. We, you get triggered speak? too I mean, when people say you, something Tim, about this guy. Tim. Like, this is crazy. You literally just said not what the tickets were set at for pre-sale. So then I, I then yeah, changed the my answer to yes. Yeah, but the fact that your mind, the fact that only your mind as a defense mechanism goes to the original pre-sale, which you know are the lowest, just to say they were priced right, is sad, my bro, when you know that that's not the price we get them at. If you ain't in that fucking line, if you don't make that cue, I mean, you don't get it. You... You right to an extent, but I, I was just going based off those numbers because that's the face value. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's what it was set at. But once once you made it clear, yes, tickets went up, then they went down. Uh, yeah, man. All I'm saying Daniel is, Alvarez, attorney at law. All I'm saying is that, that Ryan seems to have been right, bro. You know, whether you want to say he didn't yeah, know, he, no, no, it no. looks like he knew. I know. No, and I'm all. I, all I'm saying is that's all I was saying that he was trying to get the fight pushed before ticket information was made available to the public. That's all. James, so he he very well he very well could have known for sure. James in Atlanta, two dollars. He says thoughts on the fan dissing Hitchens on space on spaces. Uh, let me play it. I didn't never hear it. Y'all heard it? How long is it, man? Yeah. I hope. Oh, who said yeah? Like a minute. Okay, so that ain't that long. We could do that. We could do that. It ain't really nothing like. Yeah, what crazy. is it? Because again, it said. Uh, uh, let me reread it's this. It's just. It's just. It's just a. He on spaces. Somebody basically told him like. Yeah, I, ain't, I don't want to play it because it's his a fan. Performance. It's yeah. a fan dissing him. Like we get callers doing that shit here every day. Um, again, I ain't trying to diss him. It was a tough fight. We put out our, our our short out this morning on the two options we would like. You know, obviously, Danny, I think, was the one that influenced the rematch. And uh, we, we, we we gave you the option of Regis, which was something on the telecast. So, you know, it is what it is, man. I feel like if you watch his interview with True School Sports and the way he conducted himself with True School Sports, uh, he he deserves a pass. He, 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 he overlooked the dude like we said he did, like we said his – you know, old stable mate and Chris Colbert did Hector. And uh, he came out of it with a win and a lesson learned. And he's talking like that, which is all you want people to do. You know, it would have been worse if he'd have been egotistical and act like he didn't get in a tough fight and Gustavo wasn't a good opponent. 
But he, all that has changed since, so, you know, there's no need to ride Hitchens, in my opinion. Jesse Aguilar, $5, laugh out loud. You going you gonna to play it, or? No, no, I just, that's what I said. You didn't hear that? I just, like, literally said, like, you know, we get people dissing uh, fighters on here all the time. What we going to? It is what it is. Dude deserves no, I mean, credit we for really going never through a tough get fight. It. We, we never really get it, though, with, like, the fighter on the phone. Like, okay, I don't you want to play it. You want to play it. I'll play it. If you, that's, that's Danny saying he deserves uh, he No, nah, I don't really give a fuck. I, was, I didn't hear you say you wasn't going to, but I'm saying we really don't get play that. It. I want to hear it. Uh-uh. Let's see what we got. I got my hair raised too long, Remy Cub. Rolling Crip, cuz let me in this motherfucker. Hey, hey Africa, cuz. Keep this shit, keep this shit. You can pass No, fuck all that, cuz. You, no, nigga. What? What, Danny? I said, you can fast, you can fast forward like 15, 20 seconds. Cuz the first 15, 20 seconds is just I'm him trying, trying to God. get on the space. That's saying, 18 seconds already. Oh, here, oh, here, you, yeah, I remember that. I remember that tweet you had, Africa. Oh, I ain't never got my ass whooped like Evan got his ass whooped by by Loma. You got your ass beat on Saturday, nigga. You got blessed, nigga. Hey, you got blessed, nigga. You got your ass whooped, nigga. So you can't say that now. You not on Cuz level, bro. You not on Cuz level, bro. You should go fight Regis, bro, to make us some believers. If he's such a bum, you don't like the rehydration cause IVF shit. Fuck it, cuz. Go WB. Go fight Regis. Y'all on the same side of the street. Whoop his ass. And maybe we'll believe you again, cuz. Because I think you go fight Matisse <laughs> with that 10 pound shit you complaining about. You're going to get your ass whooped bad. Damn, this is good. <laughs> so, what, what? Oh, yeah? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's what I think, bro. Uh, so, what? Yeah. You, what you, gonna, you, you need to make a decision, bro. Because you shouldn't go fucking with that Matias boy. What's your name, Crip Weather? <laughs> No, my name Ace. That's it. All right. I told you, yeah, I told you it wasn't really nothing. You said you got your ass blessed. James in Atlanta, counter. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Ness, Danny, Marco, me? How y'all doing today? All good. What up? What up? What up? Mr. Benitez. Yo. Yo, when it comes when it comes to this fight right here, man, uh, Ryan was right the whole time, man. They should have pushed the fight back, found a new venue, and even cut the price on the pay per view and the ticket. Other than that, it's not going to be that well. Um, now on to now on to the Virgil subtopic. I think Virgil should have took ownership of that picture, man. You know, like we we should always talk about how we need more women fans in boxing. Women love deviant. Like, you saw in Orlando itself when um, you saw Belonga fight, all the women in the crowd cheering and ch and uh, clamoring his name and stuff like that. Just like when A.B. went viral when he was eat when he was eating that girl out in the backseat of that SUV or whatever. There was a lot of women in the comments. So Virgil should have took ownership of that. I mean, women are more deviant than us men. So I think he should have took ownership even in, the joking, even in the joking manner instead of just said, nah, that's not me. Um, other than that, what if Danny, you got a wife a about and she ain't trying to hear that joke? She ain't got a, she ain't got a fucking nah, wife, it, man. Nah, it's he's cool, man. Let, let, let him, let him, I don't, I don't let think, him take the charge for a body. A let him take the charge for a body he ain't hit. It's all right, Ness. Man, whatever, whatever, man. Look, he's trying to ruin took, people's families and shit. That's fucked up, James. Get the fuck out of here, man. Get the fuck out of here. Either way it goes, it is what it is. Man. Fucking Look, home wrecker. That's that's what you want. You you want to be a home wrecker. Nah, he does Virgil have a home wrecker. It is marketing. A bit of marketing. It I'm is, just it's it marketing. marketing. It's and marketing know, if it's him. He want Virgil to take claim and he listed all real life examples, but now nah, take claim for this artificial intelligence shit. Okay. Oh gosh, man, what's up? the sensitivity today, Danny? Man, what's going on with you, man? Nah, champ, I'm just, just saying, relax, bro. Man. Like, it ain't like it ain't like it's a it, it ain't like it's a video of him. You know what but, I'm saying? But, but, like but Danny, knocking if, a if motherfucker say, out in the street. But look, if you say if your girl knows it's AI, you're like, babe, you know that ain't me. You just roll with yeah, it. Yeah, it is marketing. It's nothing I'm wrong with Benitez. It. It's nothing. Yeah, because. 
Yo, so I'm glad, so I'm glad so. Somebody agree with me. I don't know, champ. I don't know that. Uh, I want that. Like as an athlete, you want to be marketed as an ass eater. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying what you do behind <laughs> closed doors. Is no, I'm just saying like I don't know if that's bruh, like the, the marketing so, you're looking for. So he, like, yeah, yeah, so, he he's a so butt muncher. Ra- so, like, with, so you, you rather get, have you your get name the ice spice constituency, man? The munch yeah, crowd. So you rather have your name? You rather have your name referenced towards getting your ass tickled by Diddy? I'd rather be known as the ass eater than goddamn being tickled by another nigga. What's going on? Let me be honest here. What's uh, happening? Again, uh, again, bro, it's like you probably find Come that on. funny or some shit. I don't know, but I don't find that funny. I'm just keeping it real. Like, look, Danny, so, man, like, sex, so, sex, so you sex, really sex think, sell, so would you I'm say, the, you, you think, uh, like, Ryan was telling the truth is what you said? Nah, nah, nah. He's just bullshitting, man. But, you know, you put yourself in situations. Like with or or align yourself with people that your name can get called up in those of things. I mean, you know, I mean, be again, bro, with, shit. Bring, bring Jay up, shit like that. bring bring it, bring mm-hmm. everybody up who didn't been to a, a big lot, party, bro. Bro, and, and like, ain't them name and them nigga names getting called out these days. Ain't them I'm niggas saying. trying to move their move their allegiance from Diddy right now? All of a sudden, like, bro, I mean, it it is what it is. That's everybody. Yo, I I rather. It's a party, man. I don't know. That's how I look at it. Because, again, you ain't the first one. You ain't the first one. Uh-huh. Look, today, it's either out or, or the shit came out already. But I know it's coming out today. But the, he did the shit with with uh, with uh, YG. And then it was during the press conference. You know, Ryan brought the shit up. He had shirts made for the, for the second press conference Ryan did. And you know what I'm saying? I never asked him about it because I ain't think shit of it. You feel me? It's a party. So then um, YG bring it up. And then Dev like, bro, you ain't never been to, to no Diddy party? He like, of course. And then he like, he like, uh, why you go? He like the bitches. He like, all right then. He like, all right. No, matter of fact, he like, he like, and when you go, it ain't a lot of bitches in. And, he, and YG say, yeah, plenty. He like, all right, then, you know, so it's like, oh, shit, everybody party, oh, shit, that's a spot. And I just said, and that's the thing, even Stevie J just put it out. Now, I'm not saying Stevie J is right for defending the man, because that's what Stevie J is doing. But Stevie J just, Stevie J just put out a video of, of well, I'm pretty sure Obama was at the party, but of, of Diddy's 50th, bro. Everybody you, you know was there, you feel me? So, again, bro, I guess you just think more about it than I do. Shout out to you, um, Dan, Daniel Alvarez, attorney at law. Anyways, man, shout out to you. Shout out to the community. I heard the bell. And that's why I don't like that Ryan brought this up in the first place, man, because, like, you know, you you, you got to throw so many people under the bus to promote the fight. No, man. No, no. We should I don't even about- think it's throwing, throwing under the bus, though. Like, I think the people that's feeding into it, they looking at it like that, but it's a party. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I worked I worked with a, a man who's now been convicted of being a serial killer, and I worked with him on a daily basis. Like, does that mean because we was associating and we didn't went to Subway together? Like, bro, you get what I'm saying? Listen, like, that's just like saying just because you in a Zulu nation that you knew what Africa Bambada was doing. What an individual does, and, and, and you know, just because you're affiliated with a, a, an organization or an individual, you don't know what they do in their personal lives, man. Not everybody's accountable for the next man's personal life. But again, this is this is just why is Ryan bringing this up? This is what, to me, you know, we had one caller saying, like, this is what people are talking about. We're talking about the wrong shit. We're talking about the wrong shit. Nobody's talking about any chance that Ryan has. Nobody's talking about those fake ass fast hands and a little bullshit but I mean, he's doing. If if people are talking about this, why isn't it translating the ticket sales? Or well, like, I, I'm not saying it. that's what people are saying. It could, but we're talking we're talking about it in the worst way. No, I get it. But we are talking yeah. about it, and I'm with that caller that called in. Like I see Ryan on podcasts that are not boxing related. You, if you go to your YouTube tab and you put new to me, you know, that's obviously new to you. Nothing you follow. You'll still find Ryan up there on shit you've never seen before. You know, uh, 
So why isn't it, it I mean, I'm not saying it's not translating. Hopefully it will, you well, know, fight. I me. think again, I think a lot of it, a lot of it you gotta take in consideration. You see them on these podcasts and then or or maybe like leading up to these things and some of the things he has said, again, go look at the comments, bro, because I've looked at the comments and 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 literally I forget who it was, but the shit just came out. And they talking about Devin fighting Barboza because they don't think this dude's showing up to the fight. He's showing up, though. No, I mean, I, I believe so. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yes, we're, we're, yes, we're now, what, 10 or 11 days out. I believe so. Yeah, he'll and be And I've been saying that for the last few weeks. But um, I think that that's the case with a lot of people. And I think that's, that's what we're seeing right now. Hmm. Huh. Counter, we got Javon. Take it off speakerphone, everybody. Nah, we hear him. All right, man. So, uh, look, man, I had to call back in because Danny took up my fucking call and shit, motherfucker, wilding. But look, but I was gonna call back and go off about that, but nah, what, what, hey, what, uh, I forget. Your name and shit, but uh, what you mean Ryan's fake ass fast hands? You know he got one of the quickest fucking hands in boxing. What you mean fat, fake fast hands? That that's disrespect. You gotta put some <laughs> name he on said Ryan. Disrespect. Put, put some fucking. I mean he does have fast yeah, hands. Yeah, put put he some respect I mean, he on his hands, man. He 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 got he yeah he got the fast he got the fastest punch in boxing on on camera like that that punch he had against Pandora is that's the a that's a Guinness that's a Guinness world record trick bro that shit has to translate man. to more successful you know what I mean technique yeah i, I, I hear he does, I hear, fast, he does have I one hear. of the fastest hooks we've seen in a long time let's not let's not front yeah, I mean, again look, he's got to be able to use it in a way where it leads him to a more successful career because that's a it, different it, story it, I, well I that's what i'm talking about that's I, the I story agree. i'm talking I about agree. Yeah, yeah. if i can fucking I agree, just throw but... my hands fast that's fucking cool if i can run fast that's cool that don't make me a track star for, for being fast i i i agree but but at the same time, that doesn't take away the actual fact that he has the fucking one of the quickest fucking hands in box. Like you well, know what I'm saying? Let me say this. I'm gonna saying. let you get your call, G. The one thing is, we yep. talking about the, again. I'm so I'm talking about the internet tricks, how fast his hands are, the podcast he on. If he was putting together those fast hands with some strategy instead of Derek James listening to the boxing voice, being confused like what the fuck? Like that's where I would be more like yo. Let me wonder what he's putting together as a as a fan. Yeah, I I get what you're saying. Like being able to use them and and you know make a whole strategy behind the quick hand. That's all, brother. Be able to implement them in the ring. But at the end of the day, I I I, I think I think the the speed is still there. And then, you know, if you want to talk about who's quicker, some people have been arguing that Haney's quicker. The only way that he's able to be quicker is if you talk about the foot speed because Haney can move around the ring quicker than, than Ryan. I'll give you that. But when it comes to the actual hands, Haney's not fucking with him. And on top of that, the power that Ryan has, Haney's not fucking with that either, man. Like, it's, it's a That's real not mismatch. True. That's not true. And that hey, can be man, proven. He, he's he's not fucking with it. I, I, I hear Haney. Wait, punches, did Danny man. just that, say that the that, power that could be proven? <laughs> no, I have a Ow. video. There's, oh, there's video proving that's it. Proof, they man, both did proof. the punch machine. They both did the yeah, punch yeah. machine. Of Canelo punch, Jacobs of and Devin's and of, Devin's was one, high, I, is all I'm saying. I, I know what video you're talking about. I know what video you're talking about, but you can have a bad punch, man. Overall, Ryan has way that's more true. power. You gotta than do three, that's true. You got to do to get a good sample size. That's undebatable, man. That, Bro, that was one punch. Ryan's still getting knockouts to this day. Why? Put Danny, hey, look, Danny hey, look, jumps be, be, off before, the bridge, bro. No, 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 no. I, no, I, I mean, hey, obviously, I was joking. Off, it's a punch machine. Let him finish obviously, the call. I'm joking. Hey. It's a punch machine. Hey, Danny, That's two. No, we got time. Hey, we got time. Hey, no, we got time for him. That's two. Give him another G-Bong. minute. You, 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 you triggering, Danny. That's two back to back. Hey, look, man. Sure no, bro. Hey, Ryan, Ryan, no, Ryan, we giving them the time. People just like I like to have a conversation. That's all. So of course I'm. He like to have a conversation when you talk about hey, Devin, boy. I, I be feeling rushed. No, nah. I be feeling rushed. I be bro. feeling rushed. So I'm like, hey, what's up, man? No, nah, you're not rushed, bro. You're not rushed. Not with me. Not with he me. Turned, you he got turned time. the meter off. Nah, he turned the clock off. No, nah, because he's, nah, he's no, said, it ain't no he clock He said you're not rushed. Not with me. No diddy, Danny. <laughs> 
Hey, look, hey, look, man. What Danny do to you? Hey, look, Danny. All, all, all I was trying to say from the first call was that Ryan knew all, all along what the fuck it was. He's the Oracle, man. Put some respect on that, too. He he making all kinds of predictions in and outside of the ring, man. It is what it is. Ooh. This fight would have done so much fucking better in the West. And, and everybody was trying to call him a duck. Even even Haney. Haney was like, oh, you trying to pull out the fight? You trying to pull out the fight? But he's like, nah, man, I'm not trying to pay back whatever debt you got going on with Diddy, man. Just make this shit what? on the West Coast. Dog, and it is what it bell. is. That's the bell. That's the bell. Man, he trying to, he trying to pay back them, them guys he owe all that money to for gambling. Oh, man. That's, that's, what, that's what they... Come on, man. Kerry G. Call, counter. Sweetheart. <laughs> Hey, Carrie, man, I feel so bad for these guys. Listen, anyone listening on Twitter, if you ever get in that weird place where you ain't connecting, what you need to do is get out of the Twitter app. Close it by running your finger up the app and just throwing it up if you have an iPhone. Just throw it up and it should close it out completely. Reopen it, come back to the space, join the space carrie you probably can't hear none of that because you're in that weird spinning space but if anyone finds themselves spinning that is the way to get out of that and to you know have your call actually be heard live here on tbv where you should have already smashed the thumbs up button here on youtube.com forward slash the boxing voice and subscribed we're at 200 and 6,505. Carrie, you hear me now, Carrie. We need listen to we me. need that quarter million. Listen to me, Carrie. Get out of the Twitter X Spaces app. Close it out completely and rejoin the space. That's the only way this is gonna work, or you're gonna keep being in that spinning place. Please get out. Do you hear me? You're still here. Okay. Yeah. But you're st- now you're still here without requesting. Okay, he's gone. We're going to give him a little second to come back while we give you a back. second. While we give you a second to go ahead and grab your child's device to subscribe to the YouTube channel cuz I don't care. There's no shame in my game. I need numbers, numbers is power, numbers is power, power is respect. Respects get me the motherfucking interviews. I need Man. numbers. Good for you. I'm barely at 11,000. You got 200 whatever. Good for you. Kerry G, appreciate you, Marcos. Fucking hell. I don't think Kerry did it the way I expected. Ness. Yo. You asked the question uh, Monday. I didn't have the answer to. I believe you You now have the answer. What's that? But uh, seem, seems like uh, our boy Sean Zatel... Well, yeah, you know, he's, he's got his it. own he, thing. I mean, he oh, he reactivated his channel, but uh, you know. Well, that's the the, the white dude who does what. Damn, you know. why are you being so disrespectful, man? I don't like white people, man. They make me sick. But still, call him the white dude. Don't like. You him. know how much time he put in this sport? You know how many I don't, interviews I don't know he's much done? About him except, uh, what co- he the did the white dude. White hub. What do you do? Oh my God! The level of disrespect to confuse the platform he even worked for. What is up with you, bro? Why are you treating man, him like this? Come on, man. I don't like him. Kerry G, so, what up? He went from the boxing. He went from the boxing voice. Oh, what my up? Head. Fight hype. Fight God hype. damn, that was that was an odyssey. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> um, I think like yeah, the promotion, like I said, that that shit is is weird with Ryan. But I will say. It might not be translated into ticket sales because, like, I feel like New York could be weird about events. Like, I'm from there. We are last minute people. We'd be like, I ain't going to that shit in the day of. They'd be like, Yo, you trying to go? So, I, like, that that shit happens a lot with events. But I think it's going to translate well to pay per view, just for the fact that like the generation that like he really resonates with love like the craziness they they love the outlandish and scandalous stuff that he'd been saying in even the non-scandalous stuff just like this regular that is regular promotion 
I think they um, they really fuck with that. And I think it, cause, I mean, he, he managed to get these kids to get their parents to put their credit cards down for the tank fight. And I think all of this is going to do the same thing because I have like a lot of people like because like, like I've been trying to get make all my boxing fans. And a lot of people are trying to like I was like I work Saturday, so I usually just end up like watching the the fights on my phone while I close down the restaurant. And everybody's like, "Yo, you having a fight party?" I'm like, "You know, nigga, we we working late." And they're like, "I don't care." Like everybody's like, "Yo, we're coming to my house, and we're just gonna rewatch that shit." So like, I I think people are really interested. People are constantly asking me like, "Yo, what's going on with this Ryan Garcia shit?" You know what I mean? So I think I think it'll translate well to pay per view. But like you know, and you know, fuck ticket sales because uh, I mean, if they say that like, oh, Tank's the gate man, then like let Tank do the gate, and then let these pay per view sales boost those numbers for Devin, and then just take that. I mean, like say you take all these other people who ain't marketable. So I don't know why he should uh, avoid that deal. But he like, and he does have fast hands, guys. Like yeah, I know the delivery system. We always talk about how to get those fast hands in, but like the, that shit is wild. But I, th- I think he, I think, I think it's gonna, it's gonna translate well to pay per view. Like, so a lot of people around me are interested, and that's not usually the case. I usually gotta like kill and convince people to death to come like watch a random pay per view with me. But people are really interested in this. I wish they were more interested in like the other fights, but you know, they they want to see this one, so I'm gonna buy it. People are gonna come through for it. But he, he's 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 definitely making some very strange, um, strange noise. And like that Diddy shit is just like, there's mad people who get caught up in like the scandals of, of of all these like deviants like even like the guy there's a guy running for president friggin um rfk jr he's like J- jfk's um nephew he's running for president and he was like on a, a plane with jeffrey epstein and they were just like oh my god how are you gonna run for president you're on jeffrey epstein's plane so he came out i was like yo bro you know how many people been on one of his planes we flew on a vacation with both our families and we dug up fossils in arizona that's all that happened and people are like oh okay so it's like i could see the same thing with dev i went to a party being a famous person and not every famous person at these parties were getting all diddied up so i don't know why people like going so crazy about that i mean it's fun you know for i guess for like tabloid type talk a new diddy party or not I'm tickling going on you got a, another counter punch remember you sent to oh yeah yeah and also i had a question any of y'all seen um this dude, um, uh, that F.A. Jogba is fighting that Guido Villanelle. I don't yeah, know how to say yeah, his own yeah. last Villanella, name. Villanella, Villanella, hell yeah. He yeah, fought yeah. Curtis Harper. I like, he fought a few people. I mean, he's not... Yeah, cause I, I, I really fuck with F.A. Jogba. Yeah, he's, uh... F.A. should be good in this fight unless he's not the goods. True, true. And then they, it looks like there's like, you know, the Abdullah Mason, um, you know, he stepped up like you wanted him to, to eight rounds, but now it looks like an eight round sidestep, which is, which is pretty funny to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but, um, it's still, it should still be a good fight on that deal. But no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I feel like we got week after week after week of like really good, um, really good shows being put on. And um, it's definitely going to tax my wallet with all these pay-per-views. It's like, I'd be trying to resist. I try to, like, like, I got sites, and I'd be trying to, like, fucking, like, watch this shit on different links and whatnot when I'm like, yo, man, this pay-per-view is taxing like a motherfucker. And then by the main event, I'm just like, I can't deal with this, and I end up buying it on pay-per-view.com, of course, because, you know, you get to keep that shit for two and a half, three weeks. So, you know, remember, guys, buy all those pay-per-views on pay-per-view.com. But um, the Riyadh Murray dude, is he good? Uh, he he lost to Lerena, right? Or did he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he lost to Lerena that Dubois knocked out. Uh, well, do you think like is that is that was that one loss? Do you think like really compromising towards his game, or can uh, he still like? I would have would... preferred to not see Jared in this fight. I really don't get what this fight is for. And I saw that post you had about like Richard um, um, Torres versus Michael Hunter. Like that, that, that looks no, interesting. Not Michael Hunter, Brandon Moore or from wait, Florida. Oh no, Brandon Moore. Well, so was that the dude who fought the um, the that that guy who had like all that blubber? Yep. Yep. Okay, that that, In his last that dude fight, was he like fought, uh, Hel, <laughs> Hel Guang. How is it, Danny? We interviewed that journeyman. He's actually 
his son was a sweetheart, man. His son contacted us and said, yo, I need you to interview my dad. He's going to be on ESPN. And, uh, you know, he, he, he made his dad quit his job and take boxing serious. And, and while he hasn't gotten any, you know, crazy wins, you know, he's, he's a decent journeyman that people can't stop. Um, so, yeah, and then, uh, I'm I shocked guess my, about my that wife. Brandon Moore <laughs> fight. I'm shocked. Motherfucker looked at my message, didn't say anything. I'm, I'm extra shocked about that fight. And then you gotta, you just gotta do it. That's people a hell of a put. fight. People, you just gotta do what people put in front of you. And yeah, yeah. So I've, I've been talking into into this uh, the back call lately. This last week, it's been fun. You know, good group of guys, but they 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 obsess that like because they all they do is keep quizzing me on like what's my race and stuff. Because they're like, you sound white, and I'm just like, you know, it's crazy to me that like on this back call, it's like because it's mostly black people back there. Y'all always be talking about like bigging up black stuff and black this and that. I'm like, why y'all only think that black people sound one way? But you know. It's all good. Ah, Funny little joke. No. Hey, hey, look, <laughs> can, can, you, can you believe I got Where the same from? thing? Yeah, like I, 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 I can, I can believe it. I'm, the thing is, I'm, I'm from New, I'm from New York, and I was, but I wasn't, ra- I was raised in a lot of different neighborhoods, so no, no accents really took on. Like, so I, I kind of got like up. No, I said I was um, Brooklyn. Um, I lived in Brooklyn and Long Island. Yeah, I w- you know what? I could hear Long Island, but the Brooklyn, I don't hear. Yeah, no, nah, it just, it, just it, it never it never really took on that shit. But it just it just be funny to me, man. Like they be trying to make shit a monolith over there. But you know, it's cool. I contend with them. It's funny jokes. <laughs> All right, guys, peace All right, out. Trent. Peace. Um, and before we go to the next caller, man. I gotta cut out of here, man. King Amin of Essex one on IG. King Amin of Essex one on Twitter. And those championship rounds. I'm telling you, um, I'm gonna talk to Clarissa directly. Um, you don't want to miss it. <laughs> nope, I won't miss it. It's uh, a good man. We got BZ Baby, two dollars. Let's talk about this trash undercard for eighty dollars. I'm hoping that's what he meant because he put trash undercover for eighty. Or or is that what he meant? I'm confused. BP member for six months on the champ level. Definitely a weird way. I see Devin winning better, faster, sharper, and more disciplined. Shout out to TBB once again. Big ups from Bulgaria. Marcos. Marcos, you got to read that now. Wait, what? Where? It, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm, I, 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 I'll text it to you, and you can tell us. I mean, you're going to just use fucking. It's, it's in one of the super chats? He, nah, you're going to use Google. You're a cheater, man. Nah, I could be... Oh, here we go. I see it. Marcos... Nyish Lee... What? What? I'm reading it, man. I, but I got like a third or fourth grade reading comprehension in Bulgarian. Pozdravi... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you sounding Russian now and shit? That's... It's... Well, if you know anything about Eastern Europe... I Nestor, know nothing. Nothing. They are very similar. It's the same alphabet. That alphabet is called the Cyrillic alphabet. It's the same alphabet that Russians use. So it's a very similar sounding language. But you got to give me a second to translate this. You can keep going on, and I'll translate it in a second. <laughs> I'm like, like I said, I'm like third grade here. In the meantime, if you are in Las Vegas, oh, look who decided this weekend, to show up for UFC 300. Make sure to stop by Hardeen to get some of the most fire and amazing blood that exists. Tell him the boxing boy sent you. Okay, yeah, he's just asking me if I know Bulgarian, and I do know Bulgarian, but I can't read it that well. Call him. Oh. I just Googled it. Dan H, $2. Quitting versus Tank hurt this, his reputation with the casuals. I hear that. Loud. Inc. Welcome to the prospect level. Uh, two dollars from Canada. Crowley versus Kosoko. What do you guys think? I like it. I like it too. But my sources tell me Crowley uh, still is knee deep in negotiations with Boots. 
and they just trying to hammer out the price. So I'm like, but but why not just go the WBC route? This split is higher and 10% to the winner. And uh, obviously they like, because that's another eliminator. Boots is a straight title shot. So they just they that that that's probably why it ain't happened uh, on a Canelo card because they they still ain't you know come to an agreement. One lump sum two dollars has Devin cleared his name for the Diddy picks? Yeah, Danny said that he said he be at the parties because his women at the parties. And everybody's getting canceled. Everybody. Um, let's see. We got Borough City. E. What up? Borough City. Yo, yo. Hey, hey, get, can you give me two minutes right quick? Let me go haul that this dude doing some work for me. All right. CYP. Here he comes. Yo, yo. I ain't no damn Borough. What up? Let me know. Let me know. Y'all, y'all hear me? Let me know. We hear you. All right. Cool. 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 Um, I was doing some discoveries on these, you know, these pay per views and how many tickets being sold and box office and shit. And you, you'll find something crazy, man. Um, did you know that before HBO, Showtime got together, every everybody would fight under the same banner. So if John King got fighters, they all fight each other. Bob Barry Matt fighters, they all fight each other. That's always how boxing has been. And the first time a crossover happened was Chavez and Pernell Whitaker. Pernell was HBO, Chavez was a star with Showtime. HBO had to concede to him going to Showtime because he wasn't box office, even though he was a great fighter. That is why your star power matters where you're at. Because if not, you have to concede to the A-side and take your ass over there. It's been like that before some of us have even born who are listening, right? That's why we start talking about numbers. It really don't matter to us. We just want to see a Chavez and a Pernell fight. But the executives sit back and they give money to these, to these promoters and these networks and say, yo, I'm going to give you this much money. This is what you're going to do for me. They don't give a fuck about the other network. They're not supposed to care about the other network. That has nothing to do with that. Nothing. But we seem to ignore that even though they t- they've been telling us this since the 1980s. Since the 80s, do you know that No, this motherfucker did not get through this shit. Let me We kinda hear you. Cool, Shut cool. Let, 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 let me come on back. I think I'm on the uh it came off. But anyway, Don King nah, had you left good now. Nah, you good now. Had nah. left um Okay, cool. When Don King was killing it with, with Mike Tyson. He had asked Showtime. He had asked Showtime to give him a deal where he, they only exclusively worked with him. The motherfucker said, "Yeah." HBO wasn't willing to do that, so he left with Mike Tyson. Now he was killing it with Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson went to jail. You know what happened? He started building up a guy you may heard of, Cesar Chavez, to be a star while Mike Tyson was in jail, so he could still compete with HBO. If y'all, y'all, some of this shit is crazy when you start reading and just picking up a book and reading that these network shits have been battling forever. So when you see a dude realize he only fights in-house fights, it's for a reason. All the dudes that, that uh, uh, Oscar De Hoya fought, in-house dudes. All the dudes Mike Tyson fought, in-house dudes. The only time they cross is when you're a star on the other side where both can make money. So I'm sorry to tell y'all. If you want Devin and Tank to fight, Devin going to have to do good numbers, so get out there and buy that shit. If not, shut the fuck up because it doesn't matter. They're not going to fight unless there's money that can be made on both sides. That's how it has always been. Us crying about it is not going to change nothing. CYPO. Yeah, CYP. Um, All righty then. Tip Bellis. CYP, appreciate the call. <clears throat> the P. Diddy, the P. Diddy Boxing Committee. Yo, it's funny how y'all favorite caller don't show up when, you know, Diddy mentioned in the topic of conversation, but his name is always dropped. I'm just saying. 
Uh, and that's Danny Marcos. What's up, man? What's going on? What's, what's going on? What's cracking? Shit, not much, man. Hey, shout out to Ryan Garcia, man. And then hold up, before before I get into that, I also want to say, uh, where are all these Canelo fans when uh the undercard dropped? It, it's funny, you know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all here for every other episode to hate, you know what I'm saying? The baby jokers of the world, you know, the Drews of the world. Where where y'all at when the Canelo undercard dropped, bro? You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm surprised y'all didn't show up. It was only like three of us yesterday on the afternoon call that really called in to talk about the card, you know. I mean, a lot of y'all claim y'all hardcores, but you know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't called in to talk about the Canelo card. Shame to y'all, Timboski. <clears throat> but yeah, man, back to Ryan Garcia and shit. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, you know what? I, I think my perspective's kind of changed, man. Um, I just think, I, I don't really think it's Ryan that's not selling the fight. I think Ryan's going to be the fan favorite going into this fight. I, I, I'm really starting to look at it like that. I think the problem is uh, Devin just can't sell a fight, bro. And the reason being is the man just has no personality, bro. Like, nobody can relate to a Devin Haney. I'm sorry. It's just the truth of the matter, bro. If you really look at it, like, nobody can relate to a Devin Haney. I, I think that's why it's not selling for him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's crazy people in New York, so they can relate to Ryan. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that fashion crowd, Devin, and the motherfuckers not buying no pay-per-view, bro. We don't give a fuck about that, you know? So, you know, the more I just look at it, you know, in a, in a, in a conservative way, bro, I just don't think Dev can sell a fight. I mean... His real audience is, you know, the hardcore boxing fan. And we know them motherfuckers don't buy pay-per-views, bro. You know, it's the casual that buys the pay-per-view. You know, and Ryan, Ryan, you know, he uh he caters to a lot of casuals, bro. And that's his audience right now. You know what I'm saying? Look at the Twitter spaces, all the other shit. Like, Ryan is doing everything outside of boxing, you know what I'm saying, and tar targeting those audiences. And right now, I feel like he's going to be the favorite. You know what I'm saying? This is why he's a cash cow in the sport right now, bro. Because he just knows how to promote himself or, you know, reach whatever audience he needs to reach. Uh, yeah, man. But but that's it for the most part, bro. Uh, shout out to Tyson Fury, too, man. Fury was saying some uh, some heartfelt shit, man. Like, don't shit on Alexander Usyk after he beats him, man. Because Usyk is a great fighter, you know? I know y'all like to shit on fighters after they lose. You know, but don't shit on Usyk, man. And uh, as for Riches and Hitches, man, leave Regis alone. Leave that to Gary Antoine Russell, man. We want Regis. All right, we want Regis. Uh, Rich, you go get your rematch, man. Let us take care of Regis, you know? Jerry. Let him cook. Let him cook. The PBC, the PBC, the P. Diddy Boxing Committee, the PBC, the PBC, the P. Diddy Boxing Committee. You know, one thing I will never accuse the PBC about, the P. Diddy Boxing Committee, is that they will always tell you who they are. My man Floyd Mayweather told you he's not much of a big liar. These guys, Oscar De La Hoya, you know, they're at the age that, you know, lying is for kids. We're going to tell you the truth, even if it has to punch you and break your nose. He told you Ryan Garcia was one of the faces of boxing for a reason. Not only because it's true if Jake Paul is unofficial face of boxing because of his cells. Ryan Garcia is going to force you to see him as one of the faces of boxing. He was on Fight Hype the other day. He introduced his Spanish translator and said, I got to get more in touch with my Mexican roots. I love the Mexicanos. And he introduced a Spanish translator. Her name is Jaylene Ochoa. Ojeda Ochoa. If you look her up, she has almost 19 million followers on Twitter. 19 million. Not only that, one of his best friends, Aiden Ross, king of stream. The guy is running an actual blueprint. The hell with the green print. He's running a blueprint on how to, how to uh, advertise yourself. Not just as a boxer, but as a Businessman, because I'll tell you what, I don't see Garcia 
fighting more than two years. And then you will see him on the Hollywood squares. So that young man may seem crazy, but he's left at his crazy ass all the way to the bank. But what I have to say to the PBC, the P. Diddy Boxing Committee, is that when that fight sells 1.5 million pay-per-view buys on April 20th, what is that going to do for Tank Davis? Because that's the only thing you've been hanging your head on for a goddamn year. Like I said, in 2024, someone is going to rise and someone's going to fall. And on April 20th, it is Haney and Garcia. Both will come out winners. And who's going to fall? Obrecita, your boy Tank Davis. It's Jerry Soriano, your lender for life. Let him he needs some Ricolas, man. He kills his voice. Nah, he got it down pat, man. He know what he doing. Oh, he does it well. I'm just saying it's a lot of strain on the vocal cords. Trees, Toledo. Yo. Yo. What up, though? What up, though? Man, this shit is crazy. You boys is wild, man. I've been hearing all type of <clears throat> crazy shit. I'm hearing about porn and all type of shit. But if we are going to throw this out there, Danny, I just wanted to say that it is people who get famous for eating ass. Shout out Kevin Gates, man. But uh, <laughs> we just want to say that with this Danny and Ryan Garcia, man. I'm on record. I never wanted this shit I'm not from saying you get. couldn't get famous. They, they said that's marketing. And I just said, is that the type I mean, of marketing you want for an athlete? Oh, okay. I was about to okay. I was for an athlete, okay, because Kevin Gates definitely he definitely marketed himself off of that shit. I feel like he definitely appealed to the ladies and sold quite a bit of records off that shit. But that's neither here nor there. You feel me? What we here to talk about this Ryan and Denny? I, like I say, I'm on record. I didn't want this shit from the jump, man. I know that everybody be on Al Heyman heels and shit with the PBC and whatnot, but I think it's Floyd, man. I think Floyd is the Wizard of Oz of PBC, man. I think he behind the screen, pulling the strings for real, you know. he We were supposed to have that Ryan and Roley. I, and uh, Now imagine, if Ryan had to beat Roley in the fashion that Esau Cruz just did, you feel me, and then got that strap and then fights Devin, you feel me, this fight would have been so much bigger. We looking at this shit. Don't nobody, De Devin, we know he going to put hands and feet on Ryan. You feel me? And then Ryan on some borderline schizo shit. We don't know if this is quote unquote marketing or if the man really crying out for help. You feel me? Shout out to Jared Anderson. God damn, man. April 13th, man. Come check us out, man. Corpus Christi, Texas, man. I, I heard him say it's not a cry for help. I got faith in you, my boy. We, we about to knock somebody senseless. But, uh. Devin, that's what you need to do. You need to you need to knock Ryan senseless, man. You need to you need to make a play. You need to appeal to the people, man. I, that's the one thing. The shorty talking about he need to be taking notes from from tank team and all this. I'm not gonna lie. The one thing he could take notes on is location, location, location. When you picking your fights, my boy, we was just saying how a Houston would have been great for Ryan and Devin. Texas would have been fly for them. Look at Tank. He done took his fight to motherfucking Texas. Mm -mm -mm. Had they not, why not try to go to Atlanta or something? Appeal to the culture. Devin, you take this shit to Brooklyn. I get it. It's Brooklyn. But like my man just said, they got a lot going on in New York City. They got plays and all this other shit. They got art museums and all this other shit. You feel me? They, they might not want to show up to your boxing match. You need to take that to an Atlanta who's going to show up for the culture. Or show up to a Detroit who's going to show up for the culture. You feel me? Or take that to a Chicago who shows up for the culture. You feel me? I'm just saying, man, it's something to think about. Devin, you got to start thinking about the location, location, location. But uh, shout out TBV, man. Shout out Toledo, Ohio, man. April 13th, the real big baby. Future heavyweight champion of the world, man. Y'all know what the fuck going on, man. Y'all be cool, man. All right. Treese, appreciate you. Drew, what it do? Yo, 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 hear me? I'm audio. Straight. Loud and clear. Location, location, location. Uh, I kind of like this heel version of Ryan at times. He went there, and uh, Devin went back. I bought my shirt, Mexicans for Haney. We know De we know Ryan and La Raza. So I like the, the back and forth. You don't like the back and forth, Ness Danny? I like it. Hopefully it sells. 
Oh, uh, all right. Well, I got my pay per view. I bought my twenty dollar UK pay per view. You know, and Tip Fakeless over there. Why are you worried about me, Tip? I'm not worried about that Canelo fight because I'll be in Japan watching a real cash cow sell out stadiums. You know what I'm saying? Sell out stadiums. There's so much demand for his tickets, Tip Bayless. You got to raffle them out. Meanwhile, I posted my receipt for the PBC on Prime de uh, debut for the pay per view. You didn't post yours. So how do we know you bought it, Tip? You over here worried about me? I'm supporting PBC. <laughs> Why they mad, Ness? We support. I support them all. But uh, I do like it. Um, I do like the the promo. I don't know how the tickets gonna go. I haven't been to a fight in New York in a while. It's too much of a hassle now. But I'm um, Danny. Is this is this wrong for me to say? Conservatively, I think the pay per view is successful between four hundred to six hundred thousand buys. That's a good number, right? That's what I think. That's my call. I mean, yeah, I think. Uh, what that six is what uh, Spence and uh, Bud did, right? So we did want that to do more, right? But I think that'd be a success. Oh man! What's up, Ness? I just uh, realized that when I bought my fucking Devin shirt, I shipped it to the Vegas spot, so I ain't gonna get my shit now. He said that and it made me check. I never switched my address, mm. so I ain't gonna have my shit for the fight. It's all your fault. You got one? I know they gave you one. No, so I ain't got one yet. Bring bring me one uh, when you come down Saturday. Bring me one too, Danny. What you mean when I come down Saturday? My dude, I'm at Wednesday. My bad. You coming down know, this Saturday? You yeah? about, bro? That's after the fight. All right, you can still bring me one. Oh, okay. Make sure you bring mine too, Danny. I'm a double XL, nigga. What up, Burrow <laughs> City? What's good? What's good? Nigga, I'm going to be a hundred, man. And it's, and it's crazy because, like, you know, I'm like, like, I got, like, it's like me, one of my partners, and the other fours, the other four are just casuals. But, you know, like, all four of them niggas were saying the same thing. And they see the same thing I hear out in the street as well with other regular casuals. Like... Ryan really did this fight a disservice, man. Like, like when the fight being in New York was a horrible idea. It should have been in the Bay, and that Ryan couldn't come to terms on the Bay. It should have just flat out been in Vegas. That that's just having common sense. They both West Coast fighters. Put them on the West Coast. But what you call it, bro? Ryan did this fight such a disservice with all that acting, bro. Like, man, I had niggas, I had my homeboy so gassed up for this fight. And then this nigga started acting crazy. And all them niggas could say, man, Ryan on suicide watch. Man, Ryan might don't even make the fight the way he acting. Man, Ryan talking about he was touched as a little boy. Ryan, might, man, Ryan ain't winning this damn fight. Like, Ryan just done brought his, like, he done brought the chances of him winning so far down that people just don't believe he got a chance no more. And it's going to reflect in pay-per-view, and it's going to reflect in gate. I don't know who his PR team is. And, and, if, I'm, and if I'm Devin, I ain't even much going to lie, man. Like, bruh, I got to find a way to get on this nigga ass somehow about some lost money lost, and, and uh, lost damages. Or something. I mean, money lost and damages or something, whatever the fuck they call that shit, because... My nigga, it just ain't no way, bruh. It just ain't no way you, put, you wait till you get to this fight. And, and, and like you said one time before, it's something about Devin. Every time he get ready, he get close around the point of fighting this man, he just go mentally unstable. He can't help it. So it's a, the nigga might be low-key scared of Devin on some whole other shit, and, and, and he might don't even realize it. Cause it I, I just ain't never seen nothing like it. Ryan was supposed to be pushing this fight so hard. I was fine with the... 
call it. Uh, I was fine with the leak tank video and all that shit. I, I felt like it was corny on Mayweather's part, but I was fine with him leaking the video. I was fine with him talking about how he gave Devin a standing eight count. Those was the things needed to push this fight, but you're already putting it on the East Coast and the West Coast fighters. Then to have this nigga on suicide watch weeks before the fight, it was just a bad look all together. I really felt like that shit dramatically hurt the fight. You know what I mean? Dramatically. And as far as everybody with this, oh, Devin need to get his numbers up and this, that, the third, and then maybe the fight can happen with Tank, and if they do good, let me tell y'all niggas something. Bell, Devin ain't I, I got another five if, if, if you ain't got too many people built up. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Like, as far as everybody come up with this tank, he a fight Ryan. And, I mean, he a fight Dev. As uh, long as Dev look good to get a knockout in this fight, let me tell you something. It's high demand for that tank fight. It is super high demand for that tank and Devin fight. Like, yeah, he can miss me with all that extra shit. If that man want to make that fight happen, he'll make that fight happen. He'll make the sacrifices needed to be great. He not going to do it. He not going to do it. I mean, y'all can just let it go. Tank ain't coming up to 140. And it ain't that much competition left at 35, except for the up-and-comers who got to grind their way up to the top. I don't see the nigga fighting Shakur. I just think y'all niggas should just let Tank be. I'm, I'm at a point with Tank now that I just didn't accept it. The man just want to get money and lead the sport clean, and I and I ain't mad at him for that. Only thing I'm mad at is don't call yourself the best. Don't call yourself great. Call yourself exactly what you is. You the money man. And there ain't never nothing Pearl wrong with City. being the money man. Pearl City, I owe you two minutes. Yep. I got a I got a guess real quick. Give me a break. Handle your, hand, hand your business. Let me mute up. Hold on. Coach, how are you? What's good, y'all? How y'all doing? All good, all good, man. Happy to <laughs> happy to have you. Uh, so how do you pronounce your last name? Fazzini? Yes, sir. That's correct. All right. Man, I'm usually the guy that butchers last name. So Coach Marco <laughs> Fazzini. Appreciate yep, you Italian. coming on, man. Uh, I, I, I seen the, the, the great news yesterday. And, uh, you know, while it's great news, I'm also uh, shocked, man. I feel like that was fast. They're throwing Brandon uh, Moore in there with uh, Richard Torres um, in what should be a difficult fight. But uh, you guys accepted it. So, yeah, man, uh, what, what is your thoughts on this upcoming matchup Saturday? May 18th. Well, honestly, man, we're all just really excited and uh, working hard. We got a mission, and uh, the mission is to win. Uh, B's one of them guys where he'll let you push him, and he'll, and he'll absorb, and he'll pay attention. And uh, he wants to learn and get better every day. So that's a blessing for me. Just want to get that out of the way. And because uh, as a coach, you already know how that goes. So with that being said, B also doesn't say no to anyone. We've been we've been getting calls. We've been saying yes. So for me, it's no surprise. I mean, honestly, that he wanted to take the fight. You know what I mean? I mean, the top rank. I asked him earlier for a fight. He said yes with a Polish dude. He's he, He's been saying yes. Before he was signed, he's been saying yes to fight. So I'm not surprised at all. Um, uh, we have a lot of respect for Richard. You know, we have nothing negative to say about the man, hardworking man. And uh, really, that's what you're getting. You're getting two hardworking men that are, uh, that are about the bump. You know what I mean? And uh, we're both taking it serious. Uh, so that's what it is. <laughs> Uh, did you expect this opportunity to come this soon? Uh, because this will this will be the third fight into the deal, right? I mean, it, it had the other guy took. The, we, like I said, we've been saying yes, so you know it's a matter of time. I mean, had he Who's fought the another other guy, guy? Is the other guy Guido Villanella? No, it was a Polish dude. I can't remember his name. Thirteen and zero though, and uh, the fight was going to be in uh, New York. 
And then we were going to fight June 29th. There was a couple of dates thrown around and uh, they called Brandon and uh, Brandon said yes to it. And uh, they said no to it. Uh, Richard, uh, top rank calls said they had this opportunity. Brandon said yes to it. Like he always does. Uh, it took a little while to hear back. You know, we didn't hear nothing back for a while. And then finally we just heard. So that was good news. And uh, we've been training the whole time. Like we're fighting him or any of their best guys on top rank because what's the point in doing this shit unless that's what you're doing absolutely absolutely so i seen you guys brought in timothy moulton he was used one time to help uh get anthony joshua ready for andy ruiz uh is he fast because you know is that one of the is that one of the brothers that Brandon sparred down in Miami? We sparred so many, we sparred like seven people down there. Yeah, uh, I that seen that yesterday? he was sparring with Moulton. Yeah, he's from uh, uh, Louisville, or, or is that where he's from? Midwest. Yeah, I'm trying to. That's him. Yeah, okay, that's him. Okay, yeah, 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 man, nice guy. It, there's so many heavyweights down there, you know. Just no disrespect to anything like that, and uh, we spar with everyone. But yeah, he was good. You know, he's about that height, uh, come forward guy. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to find a guy just like Richard. So, you know, we're doing our best, but we found some good sparring coming up. We're excited about. So are you guys holding camp in Miami or you're driving back and forth for this? Uh, Yeah, I mean, for us, it's just another day in the office. We're down there by 10 a.m. I'm back at 3 p.m. I open that's the gym. Crazy. It's nothing. Yeah, that's Florida. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing to us. No, I... I'm with you, man, because every time I go to Pro Box, it's two hours. If I go to Miami, it's fucking two hours and 45 minutes. Orlando's three hours. So, yeah, it is Florida, man. Everybody just jumps on it on a highway like it's nothing. Yeah, um, it, ain't no mount it ain't no mountains, man. You just get on the highway and get there. <laughs> nah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, so, you're, so you guys drove down to Herman Calcido's gym. And you just happened to bump into Timothy or that was set up? Because that, you know, based off what AJ used them for, the fast-handed Andy Ruiz, you know, that's a good look for a Richard Torres that doesn't throw as many combinations but is explosive. No, man, honestly, it wasn't set up, but I'm glad it happened. And uh, we got his information. He's going to be down there with Herman. Um, he may be doing the combat league down there. There was the... the Herman had the gym packed full, full of stars in there when we walked in. I was like, what the hell going on? So it was interesting yesterday morning, but the work was on point. The work was on point. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad he got, we got his information. We're definitely going to implement him some more. But, no, honestly, no, I did not plan that. So, um, obviously, you made it seem as if the decision was made by Brandon, but I, I, I wanted to ask, you know, when the name came across your table, you're the trainer, you put the game plan together, what was your initial thoughts? Well, well when we, Brandon spoke, and I knew that he was determined to take the fight, and uh, I said, all right, well, let's run it. That was my response. And uh, that's what we're doing. You know what I mean? That's why he's up at 5 a.m. That's why he's grinding. Same reason why Richard is. You know, this is going to be com more competitive, I think, than some people think. But people that are close to us also know it's going to be competitive for him, too. And uh, you just got to know B. You know what I'm saying? It's different when you're in there with him. And you can talk to some of the best fighters in the world. They'll tell you the same thing. Yeah, I know that he's been all around the world sparring, and he, and he uh, you know, you guys pride yourself on his awkwardness giving everyone issues. But uh, Richard Torres doesn't let fighters get out of the second round, essentially. He's a one and two round fighter. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's obvious. So uh, that's exactly what we're working on. You know, the last two uh, opponents we had, it's like one of those things, the sloppier the opponent, the sloppier you look, kind of like, you know, I've seen, I've seen it so many times in different scenarios. But besides that, you're going to see sharpness. You're going to see a jab. Uh, B's built a little different, you know what I'm saying? He could get up off the, get. Well, you can see him walking down the hallway. He kind of looks a little wobbly. That don't mean anything, though. Uh, he's always fit. You know, he, he it, we're, we're, we are super 
excited for this opportunity. And there wasn't a, a it, it, B didn't even blink. You know what I mean? It, it's just one of them things like, all right, we're here now. Let's work. Let's continue to do what we've been doing. So uh, d- how many rounds exactly is this going to be? Do you know? Eight. Like a- okay. Oh, it's an eight rounder. Yeah, I'd like a little more, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. Well, neither one of you guys have fought 10 rounds, and he's only gone eight once with Curtis Harper, um, which is about the toughest opposition Torres has been in with. Do you agree, or do you see another guy in there that you believe to be more durable than Curtis Harper? No, I think I agree with you. I think that's probably the best opposition that uh, he's faced. You know what I mean? Brandon's fought the same guy. It's obvious what's going on. It was a matter of time before they were going to have to fight. Uh, I wasn't there for that fight. Uh, I was actually incarcerated at the time when he fought Curtis. And Brandon did awesome because he suffered that cut. And uh, he won the fight with the jab. If you see in that fight, you see how much sharper he looked. It's because Curtis was better than these last couple guys we fought, you know. And uh, it was changed to a no contest. Do you know why? Uh, I think it was some THC, which is weird because Michigan it's completely recreational. But uh, that's crazy. I know, right? Shout out to Brandon. I ain't know he smoked. Every time I be with him, I'd have lit one. Nah, I'm fucking with you, coach. I I don't want you. (laughs) No, no, no. Hey, it is what it is. The man, (laughs) hey, he has a license. So he's he's legally able, you know, he has a prescription. So it was kind of whack. Now that doesn't hinder him? That doesn't hinder Um, him? Because we seen Keyshawn come out and, you know, admit to smoking after being caught in the Texas Commission. But before that, no one even had a clue that boy was smoking because his stamina in the ring, his output in the ring, you never seen it look lackluster, drop. Um, And look, I mean, I never even considered that Brandon was smoking. Uh, Not that I've been counting his punches. First off, he ain't like a heavy smoker anyways. And when it's camp time, he buckles down. Like I said, it's a joy to work with him for reasons like that. You know what I mean? So that's like not even a thought right now for me because he's not even on, oh, I'm smoking weed. You know what I mean? He's on that I'm training. So for me, it's it's an afterthought at this point. You know, I work with athletes that don't use THC. I work with some that do, um, you know, if they're giving me work and they're there on the schedule and they're on the program, they're getting their asses up in the morning, they're doing what they're supposed to do, and they're and they're legally doing what they're supposed to do. The other way too, I'm c I don't give a damn. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not one of them guys. So I, I you know what I mean, these people are grown. And you know, a lot of this, you know, it's hard to go to sleep at night, you know, the sparring, that is stuff's running through their minds, you know, it's uh Sometimes it helps them go to sleep. Then I got fighters that don't smoke. So it is what it is, you know? I mean, as a trainer, have you seen any difference, though, in in, in, in uh, those that do and don't with activity and stamina specifically, right? Because people like to believe that that is what is attacked when someone is, uh, you know, smoking. Yeah, I think I think when you're on a professional level, it's time to act professional. So you you cut it down, you know what I mean? And then you would probably use like maybe more what the doctor tells you to use. Like, all right, it's time to sleep. Now is when I use whatever he, he tells me instead of smoking weed all day because we got shit to do. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And and when they when it comes to them doing it right and being responsible, no, I don't see a difference. You know what I mean? They don't lack anything. Now, when I see people partying and uh, smoking weed all the time and drinking, that's a whole different thing. You know what I mean? And staying out and not getting rest. You know, now you're, you're fumbling. And that's what we call it in our gym. You're fumbling. So I think if you're responsible about what you're doing and uh, you're, you have a doctor that says you're, you know, and you're legally good, then for me, it's time to go to work. I got a work program to schedule to follow, and, and that's the way they got to think. 
For sure. So, Coach, tell me how you got your start into the sport. Well, uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, I grew up just training a little bit here at the Winter Haven Pal. Um, Jack Leonard was the head coach there. And then uh, he passed away like in 2003. I never really took boxing serious, you know, just in the gym. I had a gym at my crib. My family loved boxing. So, you know, just sparring and learning the game like that and just kind of being around boxing since I was 12. I never fought, just grew up in the gym. And like, I don't know if it was like 2012, 2011, I don't know. uh, Tony Morgan was working with Willie Monroe and them guys. I think they won the World Series of Boxing. That was out of Winter Haven. And uh, I started just going there to lose weight and and just hit bags and do my thing. And then uh, I realized I had a gift working with the kids and started just training them. And then we ended up with some Golden Glove champions. I started my first pro I ever worked with was Clarence Booth. Uh, we were undefeated together. I was the second. I wasn't the head coach. Nick Sityar was the head coach. I learned a lot there and it's just blossomed. It, it, you know what I mean? It's one of them things where it's a career. I do this full time now. Yeah, shout out to Mr. St. Pete. He had a tough one on Pro Box the other night. <laughs> he made yeah, it tougher yeah. than he needed to, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was lining them up with that right hand. You were standing right next to me. Yeah. Uh, he, he went south far. We were like, no. <laughs> but I love twin. Man, that's a warrior. That's one of them guys that really I learned about the mental part of the game because he was willing to dig deep. And uh, he was a guy that was one and one. And I was a second, like I said, but I kind of was doing the strength and conditioning and all the mitts and stuff for him. And I learned a lot, and he allowed me to push him to the limits. And like I said, we, we uh, our team was undefeated together. He beat some prospects out of Puerto Rico. Uh, he had got signed like man he's raw he's raw if you don't know clarence you don't know that boy is raw he's just raw in the gym he's a warrior man he's just if you know him he is the truth clarence the truth booth you know what i mean it just is what it is you got to know the man shout out mr st pete so so how'd you and uh brandon link up how'd you connect with him at this point uh that was so fast forward at this point, uh, I'm working with amateurs. Uh, I already had one, a guy to guy, one of the Easterns. Uh, I had Iron Alvarez. He was 10 and 0, 10 KOs at the time. Elijah Morales. Uh, I was working with Josue Loyola. I had a little stable of pros. And, uh, and everybody was winning. Everybody was doing great. And he walked in the gym. And uh, it, was, it was, let me rewind a little bit. He called me. I was in Kansas City, and my little guy just won the Silver Glove Nationals. And we're headed to the airport, and this guy called me, because I didn't know him at the time, and he said he wanted to be a boxer and he was going to train. And I was like, yeah, man, whatever. I said something to the effects, like, yeah, that's what everybody says. I see you at 6 a.m., and I hung up. Just, I think I just hung up on him. I'm pretty sure I did. And then, damn sure, next day, he walked in the gym at 6 a.m., and he just wouldn't fucking leave. He just wouldn't leave, and uh, and he was there every day. So, and he was determined. Then he started sparring, and uh, it wasn't all that great at first. And I was working with a lot of pros. I was kind of busy, but he just kept rocking out. And he got all. I told him he had to lose a hundred pounds, or I wasn't fucking with him. And I figured that would make him leave. And, and then he made he did it. So at one ninety nine, he started beating people's ass. I mean. I mean, he won the Easterns. He had only been boxing for like a year and a half. I mean, he, he jumped on the pro program, was doing the morning workouts, was doing everything they're doing. And it just, he passed a lot of people. He passed a lot of people. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, if you ain't got respect for Brandon, then fuck you because y'all don't know the journey he had. And a lot of people don't know a lot of the details. So, and, uh, we're give us, loud, give us like some that. of those details, man. No, that's to be sold, not told, baby. We just got to continue to work hard and continue to win. And this is a great opportunity we got. And that's how all that's going to happen. Now, for sure, win over Torres uh, definitely puts 
Brandon in the conversation, man, because uh, there's a lot of hype behind Torres and finances, right? He's being pushed. He's being given uh, the right opponents to, you know, look as good as he looks. Do you feel like Brandon will be the toughest person that Torres has been in there with? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, like I said, they're both kind of that blue collar, work hard type people. So you already know it's going to be a good fight. And uh, we know we have to be game and we know we got a game opponent. I got Treese in Toledo, Ohio. This says, have you ever trained a bare knuckle fighter? And if so, what are the differences with regular boxing? Uh, I never trained a bare knuckle fighter. I've helped some I've helped some MMA guys get some bare knuckle fights, you know, get some little paydays or whatever. But what I've learned is sometimes it's not better to go straight at them. You kind of want to wait for them to come at you a little more with that side. Uh, and it's brutal. So, you know, you got to be sharp. You got to be real sharp with it. It's The style changes definitely. It's not like you're going in there and going to box the man's ears off or anything like that because one little thing and you wide open. You know what I mean? Um, I have Octo that says, in your opinion, do you think, who do you think are the top trainers in the game right now? Man, I just, I respect so many trainers. It's hard for me to say who's the best, uh, who's the hard, most hard working would be the best for me. I would say, uh, I can't, I don't got an opinion on that. Um, I really don't. Uh, that's kind of crazy. I never even thought about that. Um, uh, that's something I'm gonna have to sit on, I guess. <laughs> what are some of the trainers you've worked with or, you know, pick their brains, uh, obviously to, you know, help yourself, uh, and, and advance yourself. Uh, Nick Sityar was an early one, like I said, with, uh, with Clarence, but, uh, I learned a lot from Tony Morgan. Uh, he was the head. Yeah. Trainer. Yeah. That's Berto's old trainer. Yep, yep, yep. It went from Jack Leonard to Tony, and then uh, and I took over when Tony left. And uh, from him, I learned a lot. Man, he that guy from the corner is so relaxed, and he can see things ahead of time. And I love it. It's like having a conversation. When he's in the corner, it's just like having a conversation while you're watching a fight. And uh, he's just, you know, he can do it all. He can do cut, man. He can do it all. He's trained so many great fighters. Uh and helped a lot of fighters get on. And that's another side of the game that he's helped me learn, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's a hustle, it's a hustle. And, uh, and man, I just respect him, learned a lot from him. Also early in the day, we would go to St. Pete, Boston a lot. And uh, that's when Dan was there every Saturday. I learned a lot by listening to him in the corner. I would just sit, I would just, you know. Dan Birmingham, uh, yes, Thurman's sir. former trainer? Yes, sir, I would just go chill in the corner is packed in there so it's not like he notices and i'll be sitting right next to him and just trying to listen what he's telling his fighters and absorb what they what they doing trying to get in that vibe trying to you know just i, I love to learn and that's one thing like i some of these coaches got to put their pride to the side and really want to learn things you know what i mean like if i there's been plenty of times where i'm like look you need to sit down with this coach for a couple of days because you need to work on this shit. And I know he knows how to teach that shit really good. And then, uh, you know what I mean? That's how it has to be. You, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta be wise about the shit. You know what I mean? These people's, you know, they out there, they're risking their lives. You know what I mean? So who the fuck am I to say, I know everything, you know what I mean? And that's not the way to think. That's definitely not the way to go. So you said that the gym that you're <clears throat> out of now is your own. Yes, Winter Haven, Boston. I'm the head trainer and owner now. Uh, we bought the building like maybe six years ago now, and uh, we're back. Winter Haven's back. Uh, amateur program strong. All the pros are bumping. Uh, so a lot, a couple of the old pros just came back in the door, ready to get them rock and rolling again. So, and most of my guys, I started from scratch. So, all my most of my pros, you know, what I mean, I started from scratch. So. It's hard for a lot of pro trainers to say that. And uh, you just, you just gotta be open-minded. You know what I'm saying? Like without that open-mindedness, I would have never got this far. 
So, and, and, and we right in the middle of Florida, I'm in Polk County. We got a lot of athletes around here, but we're really not in a city where we have international work and this and that. So, you know, these gyms around here, we creating our own work and, and, uh, and sparring each other. And you know how it is, you, you got to bubble up. For sure, for sure. I have James in Atlanta that says, if anyone wanted to donate and support the gym, how can we? Uh, I would have to, uh, I could shoot you my email or something like that. You, I, I, right give now, him, I, give out your social media. This way he could just DM you. Uh, I know this guy personally. He's a, he listens to show every day, so he'll reach out. Dope, dope. Winter Haven Boxing. Instagram, Winter Haven Boxing. It, it should pop right up. Or Coach Marco Fazzini on Instagram. All right. Um, Coach, so I do, before I let you go, I do want you to, talk about your other fighter what is it 120 118 126 uh, at 126 i have iron alvarez uh he's uh, got 18 pro fight 16 and 2 uh at 118 i have marcus the hitman harris that's my dog yeah. right there that's the uh, one that they, fought on pro box right yes yes yeah. yes he, uh, pro box really likes to have them he, they like him on the cards because you know he's already Always bringing the action. <laughs> Excuse me. So what's next Always for him? Uh, we're looking for a date now. Uh, we've been getting hit up by matchmakers. We, we, we've we been saying yes to everything, and then we never hear back. Uh, so so Pro Box wants to keep working with us. We'll keep rocking out with them. And, uh, you know, they're right here close to us. God blessed us with that one. And it was, I think, at first hard for them to get quality local guys on their cards and so it worked out perfect for both of us and you know what i mean it's, it's a really blessed pro box has been so good to us you know what i mean when is uh when are you and brandon planning to get to uh the west coast uh i want to get out there a little early uh and, and and just get get just get used to the to the weather that's a little bit dry out there it's dry here right now too so but uh yeah i mean just get out there a little bit early. All right, Coach. Well, uh, definitely going to get you back on before the fight, man, just to check in, see how things are going, see if you could set something up with me with uh, Brandon so we could get him on as well. We appreciate you. Once again, give out that social media so that anyone that isn't following you can do so. Hey, go to the Instagram, Winter Haven Boxing. See what we got going on. Got a lot of good things going on. Or just Coach Marco Fazzini on Instagram, baby. All right, appreciate you. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Coach Marco Fazzini, that is the trainer of uh, Brandon Moore, wanted to get him on. I'm really excited about that fight. I love, the, you know, when we when we as Americans put together prospects at an early age like the UKs do, man. We need to keep following in their footsteps and get more of that, man. Uh, you know, I seen that done early with, with, with Rashidi Ellis and Eddie Gomez, was it? Or was it Eddie Gomez and Kevin uh, Dequan Arnett? But, yeah, man, we don't really get to see that much. We got Average Boxing Fan that says, Discord don't work. That's why no call been five days now. I don't know why uh, it's not working for, like, I mean, there's people on there now, and I, I'm, I'm taking calls. I'm You know, I got Burrow City there. He, I don't understand what y'all are going through. Um, but I got tip. Counter. If you are tuned in, hit that like button. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. We need that quarter mil. I need that quarter mil. Tip, 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 tip. tip. This quarter Twitter special. Um, he was on Twitter, but I don't know what happened. I'm going to Cliff. Oh, niggas came to me out of the blue. Hold on, let me turn off this motherfucking headset. Yo, y'all can hear me? Word. Word. Yeah, what we talking about, man? We've been all over the place. I was in the gym. You know what I mean? Hey, yo, Ness, you still doing your runs in the morning? Mm-hmm. How many miles do you do? Three. And you just jumped off the couch randomly one one just recently, and you no, could do three no, miles... No. 
No, no, we started walking, but yeah, you know, you you work up to it. Yeah, so it ain't all random right, all right. either. It ain't random. I've I've ran all my life, and I always do a minimum of three miles, two point eight or uh, three. It all depends uh, oh, on thought, the track. I thought you was just like you know got lazy, border wars or something might have been coming back, so you decided to start getting in shape. Oh yeah, like, nah, for the of, wedding, it's for the wedding. It's for the wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah trying yeah. to make sure I fit in the wedding, but then. That's the beauty, right? I'm trying to psychologically, mentally use it for the wedding and hope that after the wedding, I could get into a camp for Border Wars, which is in September. Word, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, all right. Well, you got to keep it pushing, you know what I'm saying? I've been doing them. I run. I only run one mile, but I get all my miles under 10 minutes. I mean, I hit a minute. I hit it. Um, I was, I was eight minutes and 45 seconds today so i'm 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 only doing one though that's good eight minute mile though that's good yeah that's decent it ain't the greatest but it's decent but yo man we've been uh, devin's gonna whoop fucking garcia's ass so i ain't gonna spend much time on that he probably gonna stop him i'm here to challenge you today because um i got i gotta push back i gotta challenge you real quick let me ask you this if 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 crawford went up to fight canelo and moved up three divisions, would you find that impressive? If Crawford what? Yeah, if Crawford fought Canelo, he went up to 168, three divisions. Would you consider that impressive? If he, just because he went up and did it, or he won? Just because he decided to take the fight. Just going up three divisions to fight Canelo. Nah, the man, best one. Nah. That's not impressive? Why, my okay. dude? Everybody know that's a payday. You want me to play the sound right? The fuck? No, because I'm going somewhere. I'm, you go, want I'm, I'm going somewhere. I didn't know that. I'm I mean, going I ain't going nowhere, this. dog. Because this is what I'm telling you. Like, he don't want to fight Jaime or Benavidez, so it's more about, you know. Payday. Right. Well, I'm trying. To, I'm you trying to payday. checkmate. I didn't know that. I'm trying to checkmate you. I'm trying to checkmate you with something. That's why. Because so if Tank if Tank wanted to go up six divisions to fight Canelo. What would that what, would that be impressive or would that be stupid blasphemy? If Tank wanted to go up six divisions, I would be asking him why are you passing over the the Shakors and the Devons and the Tios. That's exactly. So this is where I'm going with it. Why do we keep entertaining Alicia coming up to fight Clarissa and really because women's really boxing? That no, but that women's boxing divisions, don't have the. To... You got. Champ. Katie Remember. Taylor, Rena Serrano, and Chantel Cameron that she's just skipping to go all the way up there. That shit is dumb. Like, why are we really Because women's that? boxing ahead. don't have the inventory of men's. Like, really? like look, why, look, why look, are we look, pushing look, that listen, when she can fight Serrano? Listen, listen. That's almost like the green print. And and she's not Katie getting Katie Taylor got a country. Bro, she's not getting Serrano. Like the, the, the news ain't the news official, Danny, that they find each other? The fuck is he talking about? Uh, no, what, no that, not what just stab. About? Not just stab, but like, I mean, her current fight, her current fight she got, she not even dealing with her promoter. Like they ain't even they not even putting the fight on for it. So it's like the fights he talking about. If they was realistic, she'd be over there with them. How, what, but what I'm, the, the point fight. that I'm the point that I'm trying to make is if she really wanted to fight somebody, there's several different fighters before you even get to Clarissa. But they're that not. Is a That's what I'm fight. trying to make. That's what the point I'm trying. They're not. <laughs> In your mind, you think she's getting Serrano, who already told her you're no, not getting the fight. No, I don't think he's getting there. I mean, you hey, mentioned her as an option. You mentioned her, and I'm just giving you the facts. Serrano already came out and said the same shit Canelo and Reynoso said. That ain't how you get a fight. You ain't getting a fight. I ain't never did that to get a fight. And Serrano okay. and Teller, I'm pretty sure, is rumored, official, announced, they're in negotiations already. Like, who is Alicia going to fight? Oh, <clears throat> why bark? Why bark up Clarissa's tree? Y'all both How much black the women. Y'all pull from the same. Listen to guy this bullshit, up. yo, bro. Stop the cat, man. What's How's it going? Let you keep oh, so cutting Crawford, me off. No. Crawford is not black. Earl wasn't no, black. Crawford and Canelo is the green print, bro. Ain't so nobody mentioned you know Canelo. Earl and Bub was black. You wasn't telling them stop barking up the black man. But they're tree. in the same division, bro. And that, and that, <laughs> and that was a fight that this we want to happen. Crazy. 
Yo, no, it's not crazy. crazy because if Alicia was really about that life, she would be. She she would have pressed for Serrano. Okay, she can't get Serrano. Well, you Would go you to the mean, next how week. How much more pressing you want, player? Uh, all right, so then you go up the then you go up the ladder. The next person would be Katie Taylor. Stay oh, you fighting want her to go each other, Cliff. Like how many times I'm gonna tell you on the same call they fight each they, other? You one fight is not gonna. That, no, that, that's the second fight. Next. That's the second fight. They not gonna fight her. They on the back half of their career. They older than Canelo. Did you even Google so, that? So, Ain't they thirty four, so, so, Danny? So Clarissa is is the more you so you feel like Clarissa is a more viable option than opponent, and then you even could go to Chantel Cameron. She's young. You think Clarissa is her most viable opponent? Eddie that she should fight? Ain't I feel like that shit is crazy. Him. What'd you say? Eddie, they not gonna work with her. Working with her. Eddie's not working with her, bruv. Like you don't see that? I keep telling you. Did it? She did it. What? What's the um girl that she that she unified against under um, on Clarissa's undercard when Clarissa beat um Marshall? Wasn't that girl down with Eddie? She was. She did didn't it. fight on no Clarissa undercard, bro. She did fight on Clarissa's undercard when Clarissa beat Marshall. You don't remember that? Oh, you talking about in the UK? Yeah, that wasn't when she was a matchroom show. That was a boxer show. I thought that her and Eddie worked together when she did that fight. That wasn't that girl okay. doesn't fight under you the talking zone. Old shit. Yes, she she worked with Eddie formally. Right. So why they can't work together again? Because he didn't even I mean, win her purse he, bid, player. He ain't, he ain't her even want to put on her last fight we on contract. Heard, we so, ain't heard about no extension. Like, but that was a long bell. I gotta go, B. Gotta go, B. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't get your argument. I mean, I would say, what, what division is Sky in? Twenty-six. So look, she got to move up to fight uh, 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 Alicia, and and that's not a big fight. You know what I'm saying? He, she giving Sky an opportunity. Sky won a vacant belt. So I don't know. Who else is there for her? There ain't nobody there. If she can't get Katie and Amanda, then she's supposed to fight uh Chantel. Who, I mean, not only, a only, girl, only because she's she a get former a, champ? A, a Michaela a, a Michaela rematch. Michaela moved up. I mean, yeah, she right. She, yeah, she'd yeah. have to move up or she, Natasha uh, Jonas or something like that. That's what I'm trying to tell Cliff. Like, yo, women's boxing is not deep like that. You gotta mix it up. That's why McKellar's skipping around. Counterpunch tip. Yeah. Yo. You. Uh, bet, 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 bet. Yeah, man, Bur Burrow City, man, Burrow City, man. C coming back with your tank hate again, man. You just got to stop it. Just because Dez can't promote a fight, you ain't got to come here to hate on tank, man. Listen, I keep telling y'all, man, Ryan did an exceptional job promoting this fight. And I'm going to tell y'all why. Ryan has been in the limelight since this fight has been announced. The dude who hasn't been in the limelight was Devin Haney, bro. We done seen Ryan drop the sparring footage, right? Like, like, the shit blew up on social media when Ryan dropped the sparring footage. Come on now. We done seen Ryan promote Devin and P. Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Bad boy for life. You know, uh, we, we done seen it all, bro. Ryan has been doing everything in his will and power to promote the fight with Devin Haney. Now, on the flip side, bro, Devin Haney just has no character, bro. Like, we see, like, listen. I just seen a clip on Twitter. The dude, I didn't even know YG had a podcast, but he's on YG podcast talking about Tank. Like, bro, why are you talking about Tank, man? Stop talking about Tank. That's all y'all do. They don't because they asked him about him. What no, you mean? No, man. Listen, no, you, you know, no, no, no. You said I don't. So want they didn't show the question. Tank. He, he shouldn't want to talk about Tank, man. Leave Tank out your mouth, man. That's y'all problem. Y'all living off of Tank. Tank, 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 man. Like, stop the shit, bro. We, we don't want to hear you talk about tank no more. It's tiring, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's tiring. Honestly, man. Bill Haney comes out the other day. You know what I'm saying? It's the end of the tank era. The tank era ain't even... It, it, the shit just getting started. So how, how's the end of something? I mean, just think about this. If it, if it was the end of the tank era, why did the Canelo uh, uh, fight announcement not do... 
not not even last more than 30 minutes yesterday. Like, come on, bro. Like, it's the tank era, bro. This shit ain't ended anytime soon, man. This is just the reality of it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't got to I ain't got to lie. The truth is in the numbers, bro. Devin need to learn how to be himself, man. Be your fucking self. Stop trying to stop trying to eat off, you know what I'm saying, the face of boxing, man. Nah, nah, nah. If, if niggas think Ryan hindered the fight, just think about this. Just think about the just think about the numbers Ryan would have did if he had he fought Roley, bro. Come on, bro. You know with, with them two characters, bro, that shit would have stirred the pot, man. Y'all, y'all gotta stop it. Y'all know who it is, man. Stop trying, stop trying to protect Devin Haney for what he fails to do, bro. You know what I'm saying? Get your dad off the limelight and you jump into the limelight. Your dad is the is, is the voice of reason right now. You know what I'm saying? Where, where's Devin Haney? Why is your dad on every uh, on the boxer's voice talking? You jump on the boxer's voice and start talking. We had Ryan Garcia jump on. I mean, he ain't really say much. You know what I'm saying? He's talking a little bit blasphemy, but at least he jumped on, bro. You feel what I'm saying? But, you know, it, it just is what it is, man. It is what it is. Appreciate the call. Yo. Yo. What's good with you? What's good with you? Uh, so what, what, what up, Ryan what Garcia up? talking about the picture? Yeah, Ryan still talking about that. He, <laughs> but 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 you. So you ain't see you ain't hear what he said. No, nah, I ain't hear what he said. Uh, no, nah, yeah. I ain't hear what he said, but. I don't got, I mean, if he did post a picture, I mean, I don't got, I don't think it's a big deal. Everybody, you know, trolling about the picture and shit like that. It's, you know how the Diddy shit trending, man. So, I, I think it's promo. I, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, word on the street is dead fighting the crackhead. So, I mean, you know, that's how, that's how the public viewing it now, though, man. Like, Ryan, it do seem like the route he took, like, was he trying to sabotage the fight? Like, I don't know. You get what I mean? Like, it do seem that way, though. Like, with the whole drinking, smoking thing, and, you know, it, it just, you know, he, he don't, now it's like, I heard a mean say the other day, like, who want to pay for that? Like, you know, this dude probably don't got no chance in this, in this fight. You get what I'm saying? Like, who is he trying to connect you with doing this shit? You get what I mean? Like, I don't really know. But uh, I mean, I think the fight's still gonna do good. I see they dropped the ticket prices and all that. Yep. I did see that. Yeah, it sound like they should have been did it. And, and I ain't hear like who who fighting on the undercard. Like, is it an undercard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arnold Barboza. Uh, oh, okay. What's my man name? Con, uh, Con Charles Conwell. Uh, yeah, they got Target Devyatchenko. What? Uh, Scrappy, Scrappy Ramirez. You said Sergey Dovichenko. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, man, that's they probably should have been dropping them prices, but I still think it probably it's gonna sell out. None of these probably dropping them, but damn, it's like the fight next week though. Damn near, right? Ten days out. Yeah, they probably should have been did that. Probably like damn. Probably like three weeks ago or something. Bro, when they added Sergey Dervinchenko, yo, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Yo, I gotta, I, I'm about to, this might about to be my new favorite. That undercard sound a little weak. I ain't even gonna lie to you though, but I appreciate the call. This about to be my new favorite fighter. How is this man still fighting? And he, he, in, an, he in another tough fight. Vaughn tough for everybody. He just gave. Chris Pearson, a tough fight from 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 Mayweather Promotions. Lord have mercy. They slid, bro. They done contacted your man's and told him get out of retirement. Take that post down. We seen you retired on Instagram. Delete that. We need you back. Chicago, stand up. You noticed that, right? Nate Gallimore. You Nate Gallimore. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, I just seen yo, that. Yo, ayo, ayo. I swear to God, I hate that because this is Devin Carr, but they killing me, B. Like, Oscar is shameful. Oscar is shameful. Arnold Barboza is fighting Sean McComb. Back the Bully is fighting Pierre Dimbombe. John Scrappy's fighting 
David Jimenez, Conwell's fighting Nathan Gallimore, and Sergey Dervichenko is fighting Vaughn Alexander. Like all the B sides are like in an uphill battle. Like an uphill battle. Crazy. Crazy, man. Borough City, I owe you two minutes, man. I owe you two minutes, man. James Benitez, $2. Chris Colbert, Team Combat League? Oh. What the fuck PBC got going on? They keeping them busy, baby. Keeping them busy. Hey, my boy. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. I counted back in because I hear this nigga calling my name. You know what I mean? He calling my name. Bro, it, it seemed like y'all niggas just be going deaf or something or anybody. I didn't just come out and just say anything about Tink. I heard a caller say, and I can't remember who, because you know I be smoking that good, that, that pressure, that pee. You know what I mean? I, I, I heard the nigga say that if Dev got the knockout, or if he or or if the fight did real good on pay per view, then he could get the tank fight. That's why I brought tank name. I didn't just start talking yeah, about yeah, this nigga. Yeah, I said that. I said that. It, you, but but it wasn't. It wasn't like I said it like that. Uh, uh, some crazy caller called in, say he betting on on first round knockout, Devin. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I know. I heard all that. I heard all that. I'm saying that to the to the to the fucking dunce that just called in. Well, you know what? My bad. My bad. Because I'm probably cool with the man. I ain't mean to call the man a dunce. I'm saying it to the nigga that just called in, saying, like, you know, I'm just bringing Tank up. Like, a nigga just infatuated with this weird-ass nigga. I just want the nigga to fight the best. That's all that is. And the fact that y'all niggas get so offended every time y'all a nigga ask for him to fight the best, it lets you know exactly what you need to know about Tank. It lets you know exactly what you need to know about this nigga. Him and his fans, don't, they equate money with greatness. Right now, let me give y'all a little secret for the NBA fans out there. Damian Lillard, but yeah, no, 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 fuck Damian. Jalen Brown makes more than Steph Curry. You won't find one fucking man in the world say Jalen Brown is greater than Steph Curry, no matter what he do. No matter what he do. Y'all niggas got to stop equating getting money with being great. See, y'all the type of niggas sell your soul for a few dollars, man. You know what I mean? Nigga like me, money don't make me no love about Money is just a means to an end. I can handle business. I can have fun. I'm going to use it and let that shit, and I ain't going to let it use me. But y'all niggas be on some shit. Oh, he's the A-side. He commands the money. It's his rules or no rules. You should chase tank. These niggas is weird, bro, and that's all. That's all I was saying about the nigga. You got to go out there and be great against your contemporaries who are great for us to be able to gauge how great you are. And y'all niggas, like, like y'all just don't understand this, and y'all don't want to understand because y'all don't want to see Tank lose. And that's y'all damn problem. Tank the A side. At any time Tank really want to make a fight happen, he can press the issue. The nigga say he ain't never press the issue. What the fuck be wrong with y'all niggas? And as far and, and, and I feel like uh facts just said, cause can't nobody else see what I'm saying except for facts, see, uh, I guess. The nigga Ryan did this fight a disservice with all that shit. I'm telling you, I got casual niggas who talking shit about the nigga. They like, bro, this nigga don't stand a chance, right? On suicide watch, isn't it? Yeah, bro, yeah, but you, you can't fuck, Ryan can't fuck with that, man. This man already about to commit suicide. That man talking about he was touched as a little kid and all that type of stuff. You don't wait till now to bring that shit up. You don't wait till now to bring that shit up. I don't understand how y'all niggas don't get that. But that's my call, man. And I did, I did send you some money for some counter punches. Nah, remember, I'm gonna... remember I owe you them too, so you still got a uh, minute and 30. Bet, 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 bet. Was this say that I'm I hit the wrong thing? I'm, I'm gonna um, come back in. I gotta rule my zog right quick. All right. Uh, happy birthday to your boy, Danny. A new, a new way. Bet you ain't know that. Come on, my boy. Word, it's his birthday today. Hello. Oh, Marco's back. Si, senor. 29 or 30, what is he? Ooh. 31? Ooh. Anyway, anyway, Man. mother lover. 
don't know, man. I don't know. Damn, they ain't put his edge. I don't know. Top of the pound. That boy's skilled. We got Dom in the place to be. Hey, yo, Dom, talk to me. CBB, what up? What up, Danny Ness? What's the word? Marco, What's the how word? Doing? Yeah, uh, to me, uh, the Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia buildup has been the sloppiest, shittiest, I mean, flat out stupid roller coaster I've been on as a boxing fan. If we go back to the initial announcement, to the frolic with Floyd, to the renegotiations, and all the ensuing antics that we've been dealing with till today. Um, you know, it's disappointing and I'm unenthused, you know, to say the least. And, you know, the fight has been nothing but depreciating and undervalued since day one. And I really could give a fuck about tickets or pay-per-view sales. I mean, it's the lack of fan service for me. There's like no hype behind these two guys when it should come natural. You know, Devin coming off that pro grace fight, which Matchroom handled excellent. Um, Ryan's, this will be his sophomore mega fight. And he came off that good performance. Um, you know, this should feel bigger than what it is. Um, there should be real excitement. And at the very minimum, fans should feel shades of how Tank and Ryan felt. But instead, this shit feels like a migraine. And I'm checked out. Um, you know, I'm tired of Ryan's off-brand, faux Kanye rants, the mediocre training, um, the fluctuating But how, how you know it's made. mediocre training, though? That's what he's giving us. I mean, Derek James off in the corner, you know, disassociating in his own gym. I'm, I'm tired oh, that's of seeing camera, that. That's, that's camera editing tricks, Yeah, man. bro, you like don't know talking. what... I mean, y'all be falling for anything. Well, look, man, right now, you know, I, I don't want to see this. It's not getting me excited. I don't want to hear Ryan rapping. I don't want to see him doing TikToks, you know. There's a weekend change left. And all I can do is hope that some type of restored feeling uh, can be brought to us. I don't need these extras and the circus tricks, you know. Um, you know, give me an on way Ryan at the press conference. Give me a slick talking dev who's not fumbling over his words, getting too excited for himself. Give us a good face off. Show us this is a serious event. And one last thing that that merch Devin posted yesterday seems like people were mad at the terminology on it. I didn't like that he slapped a photo of Tank's biggest moment on there and sold it with his own promotion's name on the back of it. That's odd to me. Mm. This whole build up has been weird. I to bought me. one, that's, man. That's a weird I move. bought one. I bought one, man. I want mines. I don't want to hear that shit. You want Tank's moment on? Uh, I want. I shirt? want. I want a. I want a a, 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 a. a Mexicans. What is it? Mexicans for Devin shirt. That's what it say on there too. It's got Tank's biggest accomplishment on the front. I mean, shit. Shit happens, fam. I mean, I mean, you it could say that is, glass man. half full, glass half empty. Somebody could say. He got Ryan's biggest, or or you know biggest, uh, you know, or lowest moment, I should say, on there too. So yeah, I get it, I get it. It's just I don't think it's a good optic of him chasing Tank. I mean, I don't think he's doing that, but people are making it seem that way. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping for a good fight. Uh, I think Devin washes him. Uh, we'll see. Two weeks, peace. So this is hilarious, bruh. Somebody telling me that, that that Clarissa dropped the diss track. So so all this energy you giving Alicia Bumgarner, you 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 proving to the world that Ness was right and it's a big fight. What we need to do is just agree to 47 and get the fight done. This is an everyday thing now. She dropped a diss track, bruh. Ha! Ah, should we? Li I ain't listening to it live because it might get us flagged. Give us like a, a 30 second sound bite. Bruh, why? Huh? Why? Because I want to dance, baby. I want to dance. Oh, oh, oh. Why that ain't work? Call it a quote. 34 
bitch that drop dirty, nigga. Yeah, Guo. Tryna come for me, at least you come harder. You reap what you sow, nothing but a bum garden. Hater, hater. Even on your best day, you couldn't hurt me. What I look like cutting 30 for a bitch that drop dirty, nigga. Yeah. Ooh. What I look like dropping 30 pounds is what that she was meant. That was speaking the hot fire. That was fire. That was fire. Danny, what's your thoughts, man? Let me get your first reaction to the quote. Danny over here oh, yeah. texting Bum Gone and Danny's shit. Like, yeah. Yo, you heard that shit? <laughs> he, said it. he said, I'm about to tag her right now. I'm about to send it to Alicia. Uh, nah, chance. Uh, you know, that's like the tank fight. It ain't never going to happen. Yeah. Y'all, 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 at least your fans don't want that fight no more. G Vaughn, what up? I mean, I think Clarissa just made it perfectly clear she ain't going uh below fifty four. Like, like they've made it clear they ain't coming to forty. So I've yeah, just accepted big, terms. She's a big girl. It's not a realistic fight, really. Man, she was willing to get down for Barakas, man, and for Cyborg. I don't get it. G Vaughn, you there? Yeah, man. Hey, um, I'm not gonna lie. That that's a clean little bar and shit, and it has some facts to it. You know what I mean? The whole thirty, and you know, she dropped, she popped thirty. It's a clean bar, but what? I don't know. Something about her delivery, man. I just hate to hear her rap. Like, just stop that shit. But um, yeah, man. Look, yesterday when I called in, I I'm just saying, man. My day. producer said it best. Dropping a diss track as a boxer to another boxer. Instead of fighting a boxer, is just insane. That's, That's what people got to do these days to drum up interest and all that stuff, man. It's part of marketing. Negative, I don't negative, agree with it. man. Fight the girl and that'll drum up interest. Yeah, well, neither is talking about tickling booty holes. Yeah, that shit So what are you going to do? Get, uh... <laughs> hey, man, but, uh... Hey, but what I was saying was yesterday when I, when I called in, I said Burrow City E. It was a weird day because he was the voice of, uh, of you know what I mean, of, of reasoning yesterday. But today, I guess it's just a normal day because he's back to his bullshit. Like, he, he wants Ryan to try to do more. Like, the motherfucker already breaking down, losing his fucking mind. And, like, do more, Ryan. Do more, Ryan. Like, how, how about Haney do some shit? Haney sells something. Like, motherfucker can't even sell T-shirts without putting another man on it. You get what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Like, Haney can't sell for shit. It is what it is, because I personally think Haney is one of the best fighters there is, but for some reason, people just don't rock with him, man. And it, and, and it's crazy that people put all this pressure on Ryan, like, do more, do more. Ryan's the only one doing anything for this shit. Even when you watch the media workouts, I was watching both of them live. Devin Haney was doing 1.2 live. Eight, Ryan was doing about 9,000 live. Ryan's views on the media workout in one day has done more than, and, than Devin's has done in four days. Like, it's obvious what the fuck is going on here. So I feel, Ryan, when, when they asked him, oh, you know, what well, we heard it's 55-45 split. That's kind of weird. You know, he's like, he's like, hey, you know, he's like, um, I feel like it should actually be 70-30. He's like, but, you know, he's like, I, I'm not here to just take all the money. He's like, I'm here to make the fights. He's like, I'm not going to just be outrageous with it. But he said, Haney ain't doing shit to sell the fight. And I agree with it. Haney ain't doing nothing, man. It is what it is. Ryan's the only one doing anything for this fight. So it's just crazy to hear people want more and more from Ryan. Like, man, it's crazy, man. Um, but we'll see how it does because I, I know the views, the pay per view, still gonna do good, and it is what it is. Like, um, and I don't even know how I feel about the whole Mexicans for Haney shit because don't get me wrong, like fucking Haney, damn near is Mexican <laughs> the way he came up. But you know, I, I see Drew talking about, hey, I, I talked to people in, in Tijuana and they're like. And they rock with Haney more. It's like, yeah, no shit. Like, Haney came up boxing it down there. You know what I mean? But those motherfuckers don't even buy pay-per-views anyways. So they don't even fucking matter. Mexico don't buy pay-per-views. Like, and, and all these people are like, well, maybe if you did this and maybe if you did that, I'll buy it. Even then, motherfuckers still won't buy shit. Fuck the fire stick, boys. It is what it is. Support boxing, man. Motherfuckers just be crying for nothing. Don't even buy it anyway. Shout out to you guys. All right. Sure all right. Givon. We got Tip back at us. All 
I normally don't <clears throat> agree with Jivon, but shout out to Jivon. But yeah, man, I mean, just think about this, Ness. As we're on the podcast right now, right? Brian has a Twitter space up and live right now. Like, like this is what I'm talking about. Brian, Brian is interacting with his fan base or whatever it may be. Meanwhile, Devin at Fashion Nova picking out his next outfit, bro. Like, we got to be serious about this. And and the taste shit ain't got to do. That made me laugh. I know, I know, Danny ain't gonna lie. That made me laugh. That made me laugh. No, no, man. Shit, I tuned in. I tuned into the uh. To the live, you know, because so he, that... he was talking about my favorite. He was talking about my favorite artist, bro. He, he was talking about Kanye West, you know, because that that sure helped promote the fight for sure. You feel me? So he was bro, talking about. He was talking. He mad at Kanye. He mad. Go, Danny Trigger. Bro, he mad. Kanye said he won't walk him out. That's literally. Yeah, but how is that? At least Kanye responded. About. Like that's. And huge. at least he's talking about a walkout. Like Danny over here dissing him, like at least Kanye told him no instead of left him on red. Like, like Danny, Danny, you should be telling Danny. Yeah, I'm just right saying, now. why you yeah, mad bro, at like, that though? Like, wh- why is bro, that enough for you to he, create a Twitter space? He dropping, he dropping, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's big news that he communicates with Kanye. You laughing like Kanye, Kanye ain't your show. fucking favorite artist and shit. You laughing nah, like you wouldn't I, love I, I to be sure, Ryan talking to sure. Kanye, asking him to walk you out. Get the fuck out. Uh, yo, you so funny with this. <laughs> I get it, Tip. New what call. Yeah, bro, bro, I mean, I'm you know funny because I mean? the man made a space titled Fuck Kanye West. Bro, <laughs> yeah, because Because, because he got attention. rejected? Bro, that's like, that's like, that's attention. like a motherfucker sliding a girl DMC get rejected. And then create a space because he got rejected in his feelings. Just think about all the Kanye fans that's going to hate him. He's drawing up now. controversy. I can't believe that shit that's going over saying, your bro. head, man. That's crazy. No, Danny, I, Danny no I'm not disagreeing with that, but he talking about promoting like it's helping the fans. That fight. is promote. It is. You don't think people going to be sharing his space? He, talking just said, about, Yo. he just said he just said he, he doing more for the fight. How is that doing for the fight? Hey yo, we just gotta let it be. We gotta let it be. It don't matter what Ryan do, Danny ain't gonna like it. We gotta let it be. Nah, I'm just saying, champ, is it promotion apps of fucking Lutely? You just said it wasn't. You said what's it gonna do? It's not it's it's not promotion for (laughs) the fight. It's promotion for him. Hey yo, and and And, who's fighting? And guess what what he has coming up? Hey hey, Tim, (laughs) what does he do? He's a fighter. Danny out here. Yeah, no, I mean, y'all think it's helping it. I don't think it's helping it. So to me, it's not promoting. So, the so fight. wait, so wait, it's, tip, it's, tip. Ask him is saying nothing and doing nothing helping it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yo, who doing yo, that? Look, Danny Wilder, bro. Danny look, I, I ain't gonna hold you. What, what Devin Haney needs, bro, I'm gonna be honest. Devin Haney needs a Brian Kenny, bro. Like, De- Devin Haney needs a Brian Kenny, bro. He needs a Brian Kenny. Because I, I feel like a Brian Kenny is going to put a different perspective out. That, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the casual sports fan will look at, you know what I'm saying, that, that are draw attention to Devin Haney. I think Devin Haney caters the casual sports fan. And, you know, Brian and Kenny will help him well. Like, the audience that, you know, these social media guys, that don't, that don't work for Haney, bro. That don't work for Haney. Haney need to be on, like, the ESPNs, the Fox News sports and all that shit. That's what Devin Haney needs to be, bro. I, if, if I'm you, Danny, I'll tell your boy, yo, reach out to these Reach out to the Chris Brassards of the world and shit. You know what I'm saying? All, all them the my oh, man say Chris Brassard. Yo, I gotta go. No, I'm so about, serious. I was about. That was about. Yo, uh, two tone. What up? Yo. 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 What's new, man? Is your what's new, man? Is your boy two tone, the superstar? Please say the uh superstar and say that uh. Respectfully, no musty energy. Um, currently, right now, Ryan Garcia is going viral over a, a three-week-year-old TikTok dance video. Just go ahead and put that in uh, perspective. Devin the Dream Haney does not resonate with the people. Devin prioritizes training like a champion over promoting. Ryan prioritizes promoting over training like a champion. That is a recipe for disaster. 
and a recipe uh, for trash uh, ticket sales, trash pay-per-views. Oscar De La Hoya was the wrong promoter to promote this type of fight. This fight should have been with the PBC, who the PBC knows how to market superstars and that can go ahead and promote being that Devin doesn't have that personality because the Bill Haney promotion tactic is run as well dry with the thousands of YouTube videos contradicting Bill Haney's alleged lies and calling him a pimp in that regard. Devin Haney is not the villain. I did some research. He's not the villain. Devin Haney is a Nike athlete. He's a Nike athlete. He's what Manny Pacquiao was. He's what Tim Brad, because Tim Bradley had a Nike deal as well. Devin Haney needs to be the American dream pro Nike athlete. Kids, giving stuff to the kids, being real PC, real like cookie cutter. He cannot, he, he cannot sell being the villain in, in this situation. There was a lot of L's in this situation. Moving to fight New York. Both of these guys are West Coast guys. That is an L. That was a, a L. And I think Danny, respectfully, I think you guys over there at DHP are too cool for school. You can have too much. There, there's, there's a difference between Nelly, who can sell 5 million records, and Royce to 5'9", that's going to sell 200,000 records. Royce to 5'9", skills, destroys Nelly, but Nelly knows how to market to the people. Devin and Dream Haney needs to go to the PBC where somebody like a Floyd Mayweather can talk him up. Javante Tank Davis can't talk for shit, but he talks with them knockouts. When you can knock people out, you don't need to do no talking. Devin and Dream Haney, he needs to leave the zone, go to the PBC where they know how to promote somebody that doesn't have that good of a personality. He's too cool for school, and he's being himself, which is cool. That's cool. Be yourself. But Ryan, 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 Ryan's trying to carry this promotion as much as he can. The man calling out Kanye West, bro. Too cool for school. Recipe for disaster. Two-tone superstar out. Don't forget to say the superstar. Salute, champ. Appreciate you. Uh, what? We got next JT place to be. Modern King Boxing two dollars. Alicia a peasant compared to the Gwote Shields. Octo two dollars. Kanye mad. Ryan trying to cancel Diddy. Laughing out loud emoji. JT, we hear you. Yeah, what up, Ness? Uh, to piggyback off with two tone saying, the only thing uh. Well, I agree with most of his call, but I disagree with it. I don't know mad about the PBC, um, wherever Devin Haney goes. I just think, uh, like Bill Haney say, uh, um, Devin Haney is just a student at, at, at work, man. That's all, that's what he does. He do his talking in the ring. And I don't think nothing wrong with that. He just always going to be a, a high class, uh, what I, I don't want to say, He's not gonna be a B level. When I mean B side coming in, um, but could be a A side possibility, of uh, course, skill level. But um, I, I'm a, you know he should be okay with that, man. If he don't come out there and promote the way I guess Ryan is, because this is the crazy thing. Ryan is doing hell, a lot of promoting, like Tip Bell is saying, and I I, I expect that coming from Tip. I'm um, talking to Tip, getting to learn who Tip is. Now, now I'll see why he's big on promoting. But we're going to see the skill factor play a bigger part in the fight, and that's where it matters. You know, you could do all that promotion and shit like that and, and put on a show, a fake wrestling show, and then when you get in there, you get your ass whooped. You know, and I think that's what's going to happen with Ryan. Ryan did a lot of promoting to get a lot of people to watch this fight. But then it's like you keep getting everybody to come watch you, and then they, then then you get your ass whooped. Everybody ain't gonna keep coming out to watch you. So um, that's why I think Devin doing what he's doing best. You know, he's working hard. He's not a big talker. You know, you could get whoever you want to get around him. That's just not his personality. And a lot of fighters like that was always like the Arrow Bud, Devin. All those guys they're not no big talkers. They do their talking in the ring. So uh, changing promotions wouldn't really matter. Uh, Honestly, and I respect fighters like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Don't change your personality to become somebody that you're not. And that's what kept you slipping. I just think if Devin became this, if he if he changed mo if he changed his personality to try to become this big guy or we gotta do this to promote to do this, I just think that takes away what he what he mainly focused on and that's what getting his building his craft in the ring. I mean in the gym to get better. So uh his dad do a lot of promoting. And I, I that's that's the big key factor. I think Bill Haney is the big uh spokesman, the talker, uh, from the from the um the, um Devin Haney team. And I think his son is just a hard worker, the one that do all the work. You know, Devin ain't gonna talk Devin ain't gonna let nobody talk over him or beneath him. You see how he uh snap back when people get in his face or 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 anything, but uh he's just not no big talker. And I respect that about Devin Haney. But um, besides all that, that's all I have, man. Um, shout out to y'all, Ness. Appreciate you as always. Keeping it moving, Quan in the place to be. Before I go to you, let me get to these super chats. <laughs> Rally that says support one of my favorite shows. Five dollars super chat. Appreciate you, man. Henry Brown, welcome to the contender level. Salute to you. We going out to Quan on the check in. Yo. Yo. Yo, what up? What up, Ness? What up, Danny? What up, Marco? What up, with you? Shoot, man. I was just about to What's the up? topic, man. This is Ryan Garcia and his comments is like, I feel bad because I, I think, I mean, I believe what he said about maybe what he went through as a youngin child and, you know, no nobody should go through that. But also, you look at it from a psychology standpoint, a lot of them victims tend to project that to other people. You know, they either going to project that to say they a victim or not saying he doing that or, you know, they tend to be an abuser themselves. It's just kind of... But, um... As far as, like, Devin Haney, man, I, I really I really feel bad. It's my favorite fighter, but it's just like, you can't ask him to, to be somebody different. And then when he do do stuff that's different, like when he even push Lomachenko. People was like, oh, that ain't him. That ain't him. So Word. He, they got so catch. upset at him for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they gonna be they gonna they gonna be mad either way. So it's like it's a no win situation for him. And it's like, you know, he truly got that throwback um fighter mentality where he just wanna put the work in and fight the best of the best. And um to the casuals that's not appealing. I mean even when he going on these uh casual platforms and shit like the uh podcasts and stuff and they all say the same thing. They be like, damn, man. It's like, you you so mature. I, I didn't think I'm talking to a 25-year-old or something like that. You know, they be talking about they talking to an old man or something like that. It's just his personality ain't appealing. But I don't know what he can do. Like, I really don't know. So it's just uh, he in a messed up situation. But then again, he, he young as hell. So it's like everybody can criticize all they want to, but look at the facts. This motherfucker is the youngest motherfucker on pay-per-view. Ain't nobody ever been that young on pay-per-view, so he still got hella time to build off this shit. So people just need to, you know, stay patient and um, let let the, let the, let the flowers grow. It, it'll happen in due time. But yeah, that's my call. Shout out TVV. All right, champ. Appreciate you. On me, Mike is on you. Appreciate the call. Hey, yo, what's up, Ness? Danny, uh, I thank Marcos. I appreciate y'all taking my call this morning. What's up? Appreciate you. I mean, Mike. Hey. hey, yeah, what's up? You know, I just wanted to touch base on the on the topic for one. You know, I, I definitely, I feel like Ryan and uh, Devin have both gone too far with some of the comments. You know, I think, you know, even people who like fighting, um, you know, the people like I guess I know that are into fighting aren't into all the extra when they get outside of the, the fighting situations. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I think some of that stuff is is definitely way too far. But I also wanted to touch. You know, I'm a fan of, of Devin. I'm a fan of Ryan. You know, I, I can't wait to see their fight. I think there's a lot of things that went wrong, and they can't blame the fighters for either one of them for how this fight isn't working out. You know, if you really even think about it even bigger, 
420 is a, is a holiday that people are planning on the year before, or just as the other one ends, they're thinking about what they're going to do next 420. And, and the biggest thing to do is come to the West Coast, not the East Coast. And so, you know, when you have an event and a day that brings people to the West and you have these guys trying to take part on that day and they're taking it to an area where neither one of them are from. They're taking it to an area where ne- people are flocking to for that day already. And so that's that's one thing I think about the fight and about how it's not doing as well as it should. But then I also want to touch base on, on Ryan Garcia a little bit more. You know, we all know from the facts that Ryan has a mental disability. because and it's a disability because it took him out of fighting before. It took him away from the game, the game, you know. And so, um, so you know, I think for any of the fans to mock Ryan Garcia for his mental health problems, I think that's pretty weak. You know, that's that's no different than mocking somebody who walks funny, who has a disability with their legs or anything else. So, you know, for boxing fans to get that wild up to where they want to talk about this man's disability that he goes through, you know, look at the fact that even though he has this issue where he's gotten to, where he's at and where he's still putting himself on this main stage of these fights. And that's one thing I give Roy big credit for when it comes to his boxing and also Haney too, is that they're both chasing big fights and big names. You know, Ryan can lose to every one of these other big fighters, but he shows that he has the heart to do it. Just like Haney chasing all these top name fighters, he's showing he's got the heart to do it, you know, and take on these big challenges because that's what we want from these guys at this level you know so that, those are those are what i wanted to touch base on this morning and uh, i appreciate y'all giving me the time to let this out and stuff so it's been on my since it came up this morning so you know i appreciate y'all big shout to all, all right Mike. champ appreciate you tim Boski, what up here it goes I'm waiting for that siren. Timboski. Yo. 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 Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah? Yes. Ooh, ooh. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. What's going on, Ness? Dan? Uh, Marco, what's good? My, what, you, what you Americans call it? Like? The, it I'm on the clock. I'm on the clock right now. So let me just get rid. Let me just get this. This. Let me just burn this off. Hey, listen, man. Hey, tip. I know you tanker maniacs, man. Your boy ain't doing what Devin Haney's doing, man. Just get over it. The real boxing fans salute Devin Haney, man. He's putting it down. Oh, he's not promoting. He ain't doing this. What do you want the man to do? Promote his life out and then get in the ring and do what? Get knocked out by Ryan Garcia because, hey, I tell you what. If Ryan Garcia does. Do what he do, what every the unthinkable, and does beat Devin Haney. Oh my God, it's gonna be a shutdown on this TBV. Ness, I know you're gonna be feeling fucked up. Danny, I don't know where you're gonna disappear to, but yeah, man, I know you'll be right here. But I'm just saying, I'm just, you know, what I'm saying, I'm just talking semantics. But yeah, man, you need to give Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney their props. You get me? The two young motherfuckers getting in the ring in their primes. You know what I'm saying? Ryan Garcia, I don't care about promotion. I don't business about none of that. Ryan could have stayed in his house for this whole fight and not done shit. If he gets in the ring and pulls off the unthinkable, I'm going to give the man the props. I give him props anyway. You understand what I'm saying to you? He said he's going to knock the fuck out of Devin Haney. He said he's going to beat the shit out of him. So I want to see him in the ring because people didn't think he was going to show up on April, April fucking 20th. You know what I'm saying? We day, we day, Ford motherfucking 20. No one fought that. So we're getting a great fight. You know what I'm saying? Tank, he ain't doing shit. And we're going to keep stamping on his neck until we decide to, to get off it when he fights the, the counterparts he's meant to be fighting. Whether Listen, listen. Whether you like it or not, learn to love it. Because, woo, it's the best thing going. Listen, Devin Haney, uh, listen. I salute the guy because he's doing the unthinkable at this young age. Even though he did slide some shade at Conor Ben, I want, I want him to go up there and fight Conor Ben because he was talking that shit. I didn't forget about none of that. But as for Ryan and Devin... 
great fight coming up. You know what I'm saying? To so salute to the real boxing fans. And and two tone, two tone had something to say. Oh, knocking out this and that. Subaru Matias has got all knockouts. No one hardly fucking knows him. Virgil Ortiz has got all no- knockouts. We heard uh, the, the Virgil Ortiz is fighting the law, mate. Bert the Beef, Bert the Beef, all knockouts. No one fucking knows who Bert the Beef is. So all that shit that you're talking about, two tone, I salute you as well. But it didn't make too much sense. Come on, man. We want real facts, big facts, important facts. Leg- Devin Haney, fight for the legacy, fight for the belts. The belts, the belts is what matters. The belts is here before us, and it's gonna keep doing it, man. Hey, don't let your past haunt you, man. Salute. That's the bell, player, player, moose. What it do? Moose. You're not coming in loud and clear. Yes, sir. I've been itching to get in this bitch. That way I can talk my shit. Shout out to Kerry G. The Kerry G. It's not the back call. It's the black call. I just woke up not too long ago. Ain't took a shower. Ain't brushed my teeth. So I'm about to throw out some lusty energy. Father, forgive me. Salute to the whole TBV community. We about to get deep. So bear with me. Ryan Garcia had his booty fondled with by Oscar. He broke him in. Now he's Oscar's PYT. Ryan's soul belongs to Oscar. Ryan's nickname for Oscar is Oscar Meyer. Ryan loves to eat Oscar Meyer with no hot dog bun. Bro, what's Just a little up, mayo. What's, where are we going? What's, why are, so we, why are we doing this? We're going into filth. So to my brothers and sisters. If you speak on my brothers this way, I am liable to speak on you the same. I do not have a grudge. If you like Oscar Myers, I do not judge. I got Devin the Dream Haney for the dub. Shout out to the man above. One love. What the fuck was that? Tip counter. Yo, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, man. All right, now you got a phone call. God damn, Timboski, 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 man. You just can't seem to go without dropping my name, man. You know what I'm saying? Speaking some illogical shit once again, man. You know, I just said Devin Haney caters to the casual fan, bro. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you don't listen. You just like to argue. You don't listen. That's 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 what you got. you just arguing with no point. And, uh, you know, little Miss JT, man, you got to calm down, all right? You know what I'm saying? Like, stay over there in the back call, you know? I know you want to call into the main show to get your shit off, but, you know, this is the big boy stage, man. This is the big boy stage. But, look, uh, yeah, y'all want Ryan to do a lot of work, man. And th- that, that just can't happen. It's like this, man. If Dev wants to be the villain, y'all got to stop. Y'all, y'all got to stop protecting Devin Haney, bro. It's, it's just the truth, man. Y'all, y'all got to understand, when Floyd was coming up, bro, Floyd wasn't under no protection program, dog. You know what I'm saying? You had dudes like Larry Merchant uh, 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 coming at Floyd. You had dudes like Brian Kenny coming at Floyd. You had fans and certain media coming at Floyd. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie, Ness. You, right now, you're Devin Haney's fight height. You know what I'm saying? And I, 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 you know where I'm going with this. But you, you're you Devin Haney's fight hype right now. You know what I'm saying? Considering that Floyd and fight hype go hand in hand. You, like the boxing voice and Devin Haney go hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? Devin Haney needs somebody who's going to call him out. You know what I'm saying? Like, and be an antagonist, bro. This is just the truth of the matter. Like, the kid can't get over as a villain if y'all going to keep protecting him, bro. He just can't, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's got to be painted a villain. And as long as y'all keep protecting the kid, you know, he's never going to grow, man. He's just going to be another Bud Crawford, man. You know what I'm saying? Looking for a big payday against a, a, a huge name, bro. That's it. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be fighting for WBO world titles and shit, man. Nobody cares about him. 
I'm just I'm just telling y'all, I see it. You know what I'm saying? I know how this I know how this uh promotion thing works, bro. You know, I learned from the best. Shout out to Lena Ellaby, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh real 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 solid DMV cat. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh I, I wanna see Dev succeed, man. I wanna see him succeed. You know what I'm saying? I wanna see all these guys succeed. But sometimes they gotta do certain things, you know, or or or, or take a certain route. Got to help their career elevate, man. Right now, we're seeing Ryan do such a thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Ryan lost. He couldn't be the same pretty boy no more. So what he, what he do? He had to go off the rails, man. And he's selling himself by going off the rails. I mean, he done lost his uh, he done lost his Gatorade deal. He done lost a couple other deals. You know, shit, shit wicked right now. I think Rick Ross should walk him out. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, Rick Ross lost the deal, too, with Reebok. You know what I'm saying? Put a molly all in her champagne. I think Ross should walk uh, Garcia out, man. But yeah, that's my call, dog. I mean, Ross is a boxing fan for sure. Um, you know, we got Trees. This says, "Yeah, quote." Three fire emojis. Dollar super chat. We got counterpunch for Army Mike on Twitter. Champ on YouTube. What up? Henry Brown, welcome to the contender level. Hey, yo, what's up, guys? Thanks for letting me jump back in again after getting that last stuff off my chest there. Um, I just want I want to touch back more a little bit on the on the fight and the situation, you know, the, the actual fight with Ryan and, and uh, Devin. You know, I, I think Ryan, I, I felt a long time ago, several years ago, that Ryan and Devin were real close to the same level of fighters. I thought they were real close to really kind of the lower of the bunch when it came to Tank and Tio and those guys, but... But I, I want to say at this point, like, I, I've seen Devin, I feel like, by fighting all these good fighters that he's been fighting, he, he's he's doing just like the older fighters that done, like Floyd or Canelo early on. By fighting big names, no matter where they were at in their career, it doesn't matter because people eventually, they're just looking at the guys that they beat. And, you know, Devin Haney has progressed extremely because now I feel like he's at the top of the bunch, you know. He, he's just progressed so much. And, and Ryan, I don't feel like, is has, has progressed the same way, you know, when it comes to the skill set, you know. Um, and that, that's um, that's one of the places where, where, uh, where Ryan's mental health kind of uh, hampers him because, you know, all these things and, like, how people think he's doing drugs even, all, a lot of these mental health issues can mimic and look a lot the same as a person who is using drugs, making these guys not sleep. We hear about Ryan being up all hours of the night doing things, and it seems like a manic, like a manic uh, situation that a person's in where they're just like they can't rest, they don't sleep good, you know, stuff like that. And that I think is is taking you know taking away from him, and and all that the, all the social media nowadays like it puts so much pressure on these young fighters and these young stars to to be out there, to push themselves out there and to say stuff all the time. And I think they get carried away. And, and you know, we see it on TV all the time now, how uh, online is, is an addiction, it's a problem, you know, a lot of this stuff. And so, you know, some of these guys need to find like a balance with the social media and their fighting and, because it's like it's pushing boxing kind of out of whack right now because, you know, it's getting so far away at times from the fight game and the situation where they're talking about families and this and that. And it's like, you know, they're harping on Benavides the other night for, for drinking one night, you know, when he's not fighting and, you know, he's supposed to be in training. But, like, these guys are regular guys, you know what I mean? They just have all this pressure because we see everything that's going on with them, you know, so... Shout out to you guys. I know I'm getting to the end of my time. Thanks again. And y'all the best out here. Thanks for letting everybody over share their opinions. Appreciate you. CYP counter. (laughs) 
What up, what up, what up? What up? What up? Yo, yo, listen, listen. I hear people talking about, you know, Devin doing this and Ryan doing this and promotion and legacy and go for belts. I'm going to tell you something, yo. People, people sell they belts for money. But motherfuckers don't sell money for belts. I want you to remember that. There's boxes out there that sell their sell their belts for money, but ain't nobody selling money for belts. So when y'all talk about, oh man, go for legacy, forget money, forget money. Would you rather be a nigga with legacy, right? But you broke, or a billionaire that nobody knows? Which one would you rather be? Because I want y'all to realize there's over 3,000 billionaires. You don't know 100 of them. That means those other 2,900, they give a fuck about money more than they care about being known and being popular and being remembered because they know that wealth is legacy. Wealth breeds generational wealth. It breeds education. It breeds property, real estate, portfolio. It, it breeds lots of things that they don't want to tell you about because they want you to be caught up in the glitz and glamour. Don't be a fool. If you look up private billionaires, there's articles written all over the place about private billionaires. Billionaires who like to stay in the shadows and don't want you to know how much money they got. They don't even want you to even know that they're billionaires. A man named Philip Antwort is one of them that I looked up. You don't even know who this dude is. You have to look him up. You don't know who he is, but he's the owner of Coachella, but y'all don't know that, right? So when you keep talking about what a boxer needs to do, what an athlete needs to do, You? Tell me when I'm back. Boy. You back? They blowing me up today. They hit me up today. Tell me, tell me, would you rather be again that boxer that everybody knows, but they watch you selling your belts, or that billionaire that nobody fucking notices when he walks into a building? Stop letting these people lie to you, dog. Pick your side. If you want to go after legacy, do that. But don't complain when you broke and you made bad decisions. You have nothing but legacy. But if I can guarantee you this, if your ass work your ass off and get money, 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 you wait, you're gonna have way less complaints in life. I promise you that. Shout out to both them dudes, man. Let's have a good fight. See you up here. Alright. We got Venom on Discord. Yo, you hear me? Yep. All right, um, two tone. You were tripping on that call, two tone, the superstar. Um, I know you saying nine and Devin should have been promoted by another promoter, but I don't remember the last time Oscar had a I had a butts pay per view of that. Like, Ness, do you remember at the top of your dome when the last time Oscar had a had a horrible pay per view event? Yeah, uh, Mosley versus uh, Sergio Mora. How long ago was that? I mean, you asked me. I told you. I'm, not, I'm asking how long ago was that. That's all I'm asking. I don't know, bro. Whenever they was fighting. All right. That's all I'm it's saying. Like you got to look at the track buys, I think. I think they did like 50. You got to look at the track history, man. There's promoters to, right now. Can you, can, Wait, you tell Canelo. Us, can you tell us the last time that Oscar did a pay-per-view? Uh, Probably Canelo Triple G2. Whoa. How long ago was that? That was like six years ago, but hold on. So, so look people, at the, so like, look at the track record. Hold on, hold on. You got to look at the track because see, there's people with Canelo right now who who are doing horrible pay per view numbers with Canelo. Nah. So, see, that's what I'm saying. Nah, if Oscar was doing 600 with Canelo and Canelo's still doing 600, can't call that horrible because it's, it's it's more stealing going on. Canelo wasn't doing 600 though. He he did 1.4 mil for that fight. But anyways. Uh, let's get to the Ryan thing. Ryan, he pulled every trip in the book to, to promote this fight. He, he did the regular promotion, which is going on um, podcast. Did that. He, he did the crazy route. He did the he did the he did the crazy route. He did the Spanish tutor route, where he gets his hot lady to be his tutor, and everyone on the comments saying he ain't paying, he ain't learning nothing. So he's doing that route. He pulled every trip in the book to sell this fight. And just now, he did another. He, did, he pulled the last trick. Last trick. He just said he has a big announcement after the fight. So now people are saying he's retiring, which is more eyeballs. 
So, I mean, it's real simple, man. If this fight doesn't do good, we all know why and who is the problem. I know Devin's your boy. I know Devin's holding, making shirts from saying Ryan ain't Rasa. But here's the issue with that. This ain't 2010. And you're stealing people's ideas from 2010. Like, you got to come up. You got to be creative, Devin. Like, the only ones who's going to be wearing that shirt is going to be Dan, Danny in the audience. He's going to be embarrassed. <laughs> you ain't like, shit. Just, you ain't <laughs> shit. Danny, don't let them force you wear that shirt, man. Okay? Like, this is going to be sad. No one's going to be wearing that shirt in Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Come on, man. Get up out of here. Um, we 10 days out. Ryan is focused. And he ready. I know Devin's ready. He's focused. We all know that. Oh yeah, that's my call. You funny, bro. You funny. Wheels, what up? That was a good call. Wheels, gotta unmute. If you're watching this on YouTube, you already know. I need you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Right now, we're at 206,514. Thousand subscribers. Wills. Yo, can you hear me? Yep. All right, shout out to the boss of Woods. Hit that like and that subscribe button for something. Uh, so, this whole narrative of you had to choose money or legacy is, is dead with Devin Haney. Because, see, Devin is his own promoter. He's not just getting split and pay-per-view. He getting promotions. He's getting... Gate, he's getting merchandise concessions. I mean, that's the whole point of why they're trying to kill Devin Haney like they are. Because once other fighters start doing it that way, imagine how much the promoter, the, these promoters, lose out on. Because when think about it, when you when they go to do a fight and you go to do promotions, the promoter puts that on the puts that on the record. And then on the back end, they take that promotion money out from your profit. Versus where if you put your money up first, you pay for your own promotion, there's no cutting out of that. So I just don't understand this one or the other when you can do both easily. Uh, but that's just my call. And then I got Deb by knockout. See him gone by five. Y'all have a good one. All right, all right. Yo, I hate this new age where now we don't even talk. We just posting emojis and shit. So Eddie Hearn just posted the cool emoji. And it's like, what the fuck does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Hieroglyphics. Cool. Hieroglyphics, man. It's crazy. People's Nothing chat. Nothing upsets him. People's chat. Bro, we want boxing news, man. You people's chant, people's chant, people's chant, people's chant. Yo, how's my audio, Ness? We hear you, we hear you. What's going on, Danny? What's going on, Marco? Hope you guys are feeling well. Salute to the whole TBV community. Yeah, this this fight ain't selling flies to shit, man. It's sad because I really want Devin Haney to be a you know box office success because that's one less thing people can complain about when it's time to make the big fights so i really wanted this to do well i thought it would do well but i just don't hear the buzz for it i don't hear the talk um in the barbershop about this fight my barber no guys i'm in the barbershop would have asked me about this fight they already talking about going to h-town for the tank fight and that shit's in june they're already talking about how much of a movie that's going to be. So, yeah, man, um, I just feel bad for Devin. But let me ask you guys this, because I was trying to think. Outside of Floyd, who's pretty much an anomaly, can we name a pay-per-view star who wasn't a big puncher or knockout artist? Because I think that's what the difference is between the reason why Tank is so successful 
and why Devin isn't really drawing on pay per view and in the Absolutely. Um, yeah. box so office. It's always been that way. I'm saying, like, outside of Floyd, has there ever been a pure boxer that just tore it up on, as far as pay per view buys and big events? I don't think there is. I just think that's the. We keep trying to figure out why Devin ain't reaching Tank's level of success. I just think it's simple. All the big time box office selling smash boxers have been punchers, man. Whether it be Mike Tyson, fucking Sugar Ray Leonard could even punch up a whole lot. He was sleeping shit and he was flashy. Um, Tank. Oscar could punch, and he had the ladies. Like, I just don't think a pure boxer will ever be a pay-per-view star. I think you really got to be cracking to be a pay-per-view star. That's just my opinion. Like I said, if you can think of some guys who were able to sell on pay-per-view without being a knockout artist, uh, prove me wrong. But I just ultimately think that's the issue Devin's facing. He doesn't have the most fan-friendly style. Hardcore boxing pundits like us like the pure boxing, like the feints, like the defensive responsibility. But the casual fan wants to see some guys putting boots to asses. And Devin don't necessarily always do that. And guys like Shakur is going to come up with this same issue as well. So, yeah, that's just me talking shit, man. I'm bored in the house binge watching Insecure on Netflix. Thought I'd call in. And just talk some boxing with the guys, man. But yeah, man, I just I, I wish this fight would be more successful, but it, it it's probably not gonna do very well. It should have probably been on the West Coast. That may have helped. I don't know, man. But salute to Devin, man. He's gonna beat the shit out of Ryan. I got Devin getting the stoppage um, within uh, six rounds. But that's my call. T- TBV, uh, protect your mental health at all times. I'm out. Shit, if Devin get the stoppage, this a home run. You don't got to do big numbers if you can stop a common opponent with Tank. You feel me? Jesus, Jesus. Khaled, what up? We got no more callers. It's over. Phone lines is done. You're done. You're done. No. Rich, what up? Rich. Yo. Yo. Max, he literally said with the exception of Floyd. What up, Rich? Hey, yo, listen, man. Everybody's saying one thing, man. Them ticket prices is outrageous, bro. They dropped I already. For t- yeah, but listen, listen, hit me out, bro. I'm 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 a casual boxing fan, bro. I paid for two tickets. And it's not good seats. I paid twelve hundred dollars, bro. God. Damn. That's ins- that's insane. Yeah, bro. Why you that's did insane, it? That's insane, bro. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh. My my brother, he paid for two tickets. His shit was fourteen hundred. <laughs> so everybody saying anything, it's the ticket prices, man. They outrageous. It don't matter if it's on the West Coast or East Coast. Cause boxing fans is worldwide. So like I said, bro. The, the ticket prices is outrageous. They dropped the ticket prices too late. I mean, it's probably still going to sell out. But, bro, them ticket prices was outrageous, bro. That's all I got to say. I don't all think right. it's going to sell out. That's cri- well, they it dropped might not it. sell out. Oh, shit. Rich, you had to say that's all you got to say. I let you off. Uh, Marcos, I seen another drop with, like, I seen a bunch of seats listed at 126 Right, Danny? Like $126? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think it's not about the price. Even people don't want to spend money right I now. I mean, you it's heard tough. that, man. How many tickets could he have bought? That shit was motherfucking 1400 for two and 1200 for two. That's insane bananas, man. Yeah, well, when it first came out, a decent seat, not even floor seat, was like 1400 no, per that's, ticket that's, when that's, it first that's, dropped. That's, that's crazy, yo. That's crazy, B. Let the AC breeze. Listen, Nest GTO. Instagram and Twitter, we right back at it at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard. Damn. Danny, where can they find you? Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. They can find me at the Boxing Voice once they subscribe. Ring Walk Danny on social media. 
Marcos. Uh, Marcos. Marco Boxing. Marco three underscores boxing on all platforms. Uh, yeah. Peace. Hit me up. Peace.